A bada bing bada bam. <laughs> Welcome to the finale of this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder episode. This is the finale of Marry My Husband. I'm honestly kind of sad that it's over, but also so happy to finally figure out who the f- ends with Gia's fate. I need to know. So I'm going to give you guys a quick recap. Gia, our girly pop main character, dying in 2023 of terminal cancer. Gia finds out that her slimy, weasley little husband, Michael, is sleeping with her best friend, Stacy. They are waiting for Gia to die so that they can skip off into the sunset with her life insurance money. But instead of dying of cancer, Gia tries to confront them. Michael pushes her onto a glass coffee table. This is important. And she dies right then and there. But then Gia wakes up again in 2013 and she has a second chance at life to relive the past 10 years before she got cancer, before she was married to her husband, Michael, before Michael cheats on her with her best friend, Stacy. So she flips the script. This time, Gia is the master of her universe. She falls in love with her sexy office manager, Richard, who also secretly happens, of course, to be the company chairman's grandson, aka he's going to be the next CEO of UNK Marketing or UNK whatever the fork they do. Gia calls off the engagement with Michael and makes Stacy, her best friend, super jealous. So jealous enough that Stacy ends up marrying Michael. So now Gia's living her happily ever after with her new Tebba husband. But if only, if only life were that fucking easy, okay? Because her bestie, Mrs. Yang, ends up with the cheating deadbeat husband and the stomach cancer. So right now it seems like all the fate is being passed on to the good Mrs. Yang versus the bad best friend, Stacy. Stacy is out for revenge against Yura, remember? Richard's ex fiance who comes around to claim her Tebar back for no reason at all. And she also tries to like kill Gia in the process. Yura literally gets Gia's mom, Stacy's dad, and Stacy and Michael to all work for her to kill Gia. But when the white dump truck, because of course the car accident of Doom is heading straight for Gia, Richard swerves in. I guess he tries to die. <laughs> I guess he tries to die in front of Gia. And Gia's in the hospital waiting for him to wake up, and he does. And he says the words, I love you. Those are his first words. <laughs> ah! But it's stressful because Richard is technically supposed to die in a car crash. So his fate is still up in the air. Like you can't escape fate in this show. And now Gia knows that the three musketeers, Yura, Michael, and Stacy, are all joining forces to freaking kill her. Because why did this turn into like a John Wick episode? But here we are. Yura tells Stacy and Michael, lay low. Wait for my call. Gia's in the hospital talking to Richard. And like tending to him. So that's where we're getting back into it. Gia gets back from her meeting with Stacy at the abandoned hospital where Stacy lets her guard down. She admits that she freaking hates Gia's guts because Gia's mom allegedly stole Stacy's dad away from the family because they had an affair. Do you remember? Okay, just like behind the scenes. Tell me one more time. (laughs) (laughs) So Gia's mom left Gia's family to go sleep with Stacy's dad. And Mm -hmm. so Gia was left with just her dad and Stacy was left with just her mom. Mm. They become friends, but Stacy freaking hates the fact that Gia's dad Mm. treats her like a princess, whereas Stacy's mom treats Stacy like a child that she never wanted. Mm-hmm. So both their parents skipped off into the sunset together, but Gia was loved by her remaining parent and Stacy mm-hmm. wasn't. And that made her hate everything about Gia. So anyway, Gia's back and she's watching over Richard, but another friend of Gia's needs a lifeline. She gets a text from Mrs. Yang. Gia, what are you doing after work today? Can we meet for a moment? She texts back, what's wrong? It's embarrassing to say, but I think my husband's cheating on me. And Gia's whole life flashes before her eyes because no matter how hard she's trying to pass her fate on to Stacy and Michael, why is Mrs. Yang going to inherit it all? And the two demon spawns are just going to live happily ever after? But maybe, just maybe, we've got an ally because Mr. Lee, grandpa chairman's right-hand man, older Richard vibes, very stoic, but seems to have a weird soft spot for Mrs. Yang. He's in the parking lot of Mrs. Yang's restaurant debating on whether or not he should get LA Kaibi to go or take out. But let's be real. He doesn't look like an LA Kaibi type of guy. He looks like a bloody filet mignon type of guy. So what the fork is he doing here? See, their relationship is weird. Yeah. Like, why does he have a thing for her? He really likes upstanding people. Upstanding people? Like, he... Okay, so he really likes to be morally correct is the vibe that I get from him. Mm. But he doesn't like... 
He just doesn't. But he doesn't like a single woman. He likes a married woman. Yes, but I think he also doesn't like the fact that she's so morally upstanding that oh. it's bad for her.、Mm. So he's invested. Yeah, it's like he understands why she is like that because he, to a degree, is like that, and he respects、mm. it a lot. He's but attracted this, by it. Yes, but at the same time, he's like, "Come on, don't be so fucking dumb. Like, stand up for yourself."、Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is like an old <laughs> plot like a, line. This is like an Ajuma Ajushi plot line going、okay. on right now. All right. <laughs> But it's so good. Okay. So he gets a glimpse of Mrs. Yang, and she's storming out of the restaurant. And instead of following her, he goes to the back of the restaurant to see what made her so mad because she's literally running out of there. And he sees her deadbeat husband in the stairwell with the restaurant employee trying to get some action during his five-minute break. Mrs. Yang is walking off. She'd be running, but she's sick, so she's just like in the empty streets in the middle of the night, stumbling over the cement. Like it's giving a lot. Like, <laughs> it, like yeah. So Mr. Lee races to her in his car, steps out the car on the road beside her, and she collapses rather dramatically, might I add, in the middle of the street. Her shoes fell off somehow, and Mr. Lee gets out, grabs her shoe, and she's like, "Oh, Mr. Lee, hello." And he's like, "Put it on, snap out of it, and put your shoe back on." She puts the shoe back on, and she gets to her feet. But Mr. Lee is distressed. He's massaging his temples. Go slap your husband if you caught him cheating. Kick him, claw his eyes out, crack his skull open. Why are you running away? How did you know? Is that what's important right now? Do you want to go back? I have a golf club in my trunk. Do you want to borrow it? How have you lived to be so upright like this? Even when I'm so out of line, why can't you even get angry? That's why he does it, even at your father's restaurant. Like it's very obvious that he cares about her, but like, I'm offended. Okay, like yelling at her at、yeah. the same time. I'm like, what the fork is going on right now? This is like, you figure out your feelings about me, okay? Because you're confusing my life. <laughs> And she's like, whether I get angry or not, Mr. Lee, isn't it wrong to do that? Isn't it wrong to disrespect me regardless of how I act? If someone's kind, shouldn't you be kind back to them? I'm good to my husband, and I wait and I keep waiting. Shouldn't he come to his senses? Mrs. K, get the fucking golf club! What are you doing? Like, what are you saying right now? Meanwhile, Richard's still in the hospital. The failed vehicular homicide is currently being cleaned up by Yura's bodyguard henchman. He stops by Yura's hotel suite to give an update on where everything stands. The police agreed to close the case as an accident by the drunk man who stole a truck. I found out Gia's mom and Stacy's dad's location, and I'll catch them soon. <sighs> It's taking too long. I was so worried that I lost sleep. She walks up to him and pats his cheek. No loose ends, okay? But if you thought Yura was just gonna cut her losses now and that her plan is null and void, and she's gonna be like, you know what? Maybe I'll go back home to Japan. You're wrong. She heads out for dinner at a very high-end European fusion restaurant, and the food is so good that she asks to speak to the head chef. He stumbles out. Hello, I'm head chef Elby. How was your meal? I heard you wanted to speak with me. Yeah, the meal was great, and I wanted to know,、um, how do you know Richard Yu? So now Yura's plan B is all in the works, and all Michael and Stacy can do is wait. Michael heads into the office the next day, and he sees Richard's desk is empty, and he throws his fist into the air like he wants to tussle. Because remember, he found out this is the future CEO of the company, and he's forking around with Gia, who he didn't care about until now, and Gia's not dead, so it's pissing him off. Okay, but just so you know, Michael. Even if Richard's comatose, he would rise up from the dead just to beat your ass one more time. Bap bap. Okay. <laughs> and once Michael's boring day is over, he gets back home to sleep with his wifey in mommy's guest bedroom, and he knocks out. It must be hard to be a D-level employee. He sleeps so soundly that he doesn't even notice Stacy taking his phone and writing down Yura's phone number. So now, that was the recap. <laughs> Oh. That was like new information plus a recap, but let's get into it. Richard wakes up and he's like, "I love you, Gia," and he gets discharged from the hospital. Gia can finally take her man home, but he's holding a crutch with one arm, limping on the opposite leg, while his other arm is in a sling. And Gia is trying to get him to stop moving so fast, but he's like bulldozing his way in through his condo. He's forcing his coat off his back and he's walking way too fast. And Gia's like, "The floor is slippery. Please be careful." Jia tries to help him with his coat, but he's an independent king. To survive, you must be both sexy and self-sufficient. Okay? And he's like, "It's fine. You don't have to." And he like rips off his coat. She's like, "I told you not to move." 
Richard hobbles over to the couch and he's trying to sneak his sling off without Gia knowing because he's a man. His caveman brain refuses to accept modern medical contraptions, okay? He is an alpha male. She's like, what are you doing? It's fine. The doctors were just worried. I don't need this. Gia forces the brace back on so aggressively that she probably did more damage than him trying to take it off. And she's like, the smart doctors know what they're doing. Listen to them. Don't do anything on your own from now on, okay? You just never listen. Gia's giving mother, okay? Richard is looking at her like, have my babies. And she's like, are you hungry? She walks off to start making him something to eat, but he grabs her and he's like pulling her back onto the couch to hug him. And she's like, what are you doing? (laughs) And he's like, let's just stay like this. When I thought it was the end, I regretted it so much and I was given another chance, but I wasn't honest again. Well, Richard, you're not gonna die. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. No, I'm sorry. Yura is not an easy opponent. Even after I saw her unimaginable true colors, it took over three years last time to end it with her. She's someone that's beyond your imagination. I know what you mean. When you spend a long time with someone, it's hard to see that person properly. You try not to believe it. You only realize it after you see the end. Your ex-fiance is trying to kill me and Michael and Stacy get paid if I die. They joined forces. Mrs. Yang's husband is having an affair. I think my fate moved to Mrs. Yang and it's not over with Stacy and Michael's marriage. There's something more. I had to find that out to protect Mrs. Yang. Just be on my side. And you just see in this like five minute montage, the way Richard completely switches from being stubborn to completely helpless is beyond me. Gia is cooking him dinner and he's trying to grab rice with chopsticks with his non-dominant hand, but he's struggling. Gia's trying to smile at her helpless man and she walks over to feed him. And Richard's trying not to look her in the eye because he's literally doing this just so he can take care of her. The doctor said he can take off the sling. He literally told Mr. Lee, this is the only way Gia will take care of me and baby me right Right now so he's keeping on the fucking sling gia is shoving spoonfuls of rice and soup into his mouth and he's just living his dream men are so simple okay and then he's like gia yes what's wrong omelet and he's like she's shoving omelet into his mouth i was literally screaming at this scene though it's so cute okay it's really cute they're so cute i'm gonna throw up but richard is not ready to let gia go she's at the door saying her goodbyes i should go get some rest and i'm gonna see you tomorrow She grabs onto his neck and kisses him on the cheek. They don't sleep together? No. Oh. It's a K-drama, honey. Oh. What do you think this is, too hot to handle? Love Island season 27? No. (laughs) No. So then she's like, thanks for today. So in love. And as soon as she turns around, (gasps) Richard winces in pain and he's (laughs) hunched forward and he looks like he's about to fart or take a shit. Mm Oh my God, what's wrong? And he's like, Gia, does it hurt again? And she's trying to inspect his broken arm. And then he just falls on top of her and hugs her. And it's so cute. And she's like, stop it. I can't believe you. (laughs) And so Richard is grabbing her by the hand. Can you stay the night? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I don't know what this man is thinking or how he thinks he's going to get some seasoning, but Bestie said she's sleeping on the floor. Like she literally put up a little mat on the floor next to his bed and she set herself up a pillow and comforter. And Richard's just looking at her from the bed like, you've got to be f-ing kidding me right now. They don't even like, have an extra bedroom. That's what I'm saying. Future CEO, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. And Gia's like, good night. Oh, I'll get the light. And the man is not having a good time. He stomps over to the light switch, flips it down before she can get up. And then he promptly drops his pillow onto the ground right next to hers and lays his (laughs) ass down on the ground. And she's like, Mr. You, what are you doing? (laughs) Stop it, step bro. Like it's so, come on now. You guys have been like making out two episodes ago. What's going on? And he's like, I understand what you mean. So I'm just going to hold you. It still hurts my arm. I swear. And then they hug and they go to sleep. And it's like really cute. Like it almost feels more sexual than intimate relations. Like I was having chest pains. My eyes were leaking. I was crying. They fall asleep in each other's arms. And it's so symbolic because it's kind of like the first time that they met when Gio was drunk. Mm. On the floor and they're like looking at each other, their hand holding their head and they fall asleep. 
and Richard's being very respectful well the first time he was respectful this time I think he's a little disrespectful I feel like he grabbed her ass at least a few times they're like really cuddling yeah so in the morning Richard opens his eyes expecting to see Gia but she's gone again and he's instantly reminded of the first night when he lost her so he jumps out of bed thinking that she abandoned him again but then he goes into the kitchen and she's making just straight strawberry smoothie I didn't see any other food or veg just like in blended strawberries like why would you do that Honey, <laughs> yeah like, do you want to wake up tomorrow morning <laughs> me in the kitchen <laughs> strawberry juice just like shirtless oh. with the apron <laughs> we live with my mother okay <laughs> <laughs> okay okay and gia's like oh are you up i was gonna ask you do you want strawberries they're really good it's the yummiest strawberries i've ever and richard's only prescription to his ptsd is to hug gia as tightly as possible so he just doesn't even listen to her and grabs her and he's like trying to make out with her and she's like what did you have a nightmare and it's like the cutest little scene ever and like the producers are so wrong for this. But immediately after this scene, Gia is walking back into the office and Mr. Kim, remember manager misogynist Kim, is harassing her for being late. Suddenly, suddenly no more serotonin. I swear, this Kim guy does not actually have a job. He is paid to test everybody's patience. I know we're both assistant managers, Gia, but I'm an acting manager. So I have to say this. You take a day off too often as if you're part of the owner's family or something. Gia staring at her screen, not entertaining this man. I had some issues at home, Mr. Kim. You did! Oh, did you guys hear that, everyone? Is there anyone in this office that doesn't have issues at home? Basically, now that Mrs. Yang is on medical leave and Gia is tending to Richard, Mr. Kim is getting his ass a little too cozy in the old manager chair, and he thinks that his little micro peen is big enough to be bossing people around, okay? But he's... What? Not a manager. No. And guess oh. who's about to let him know? Standing behind him with a whole new fuck you vibe because I don't know where she got this from suddenly because she's trying to divorce her husband is Mrs. Yang. Let's go. And she says, <laughs> shall I help you then, Mr. Kim? <laughs> Everyone is screaming, Mrs. Yang is back. They all crowd around her. Mrs. Yang, Mrs. Yang, is it okay to work now? Are you sure you're okay? Meanwhile, Yura not having a great time. The bodyguard lets her know. We found Stacy's dad and Gia's dad. They were scared, so they tried to hide. And hide they did. They're bunkered up in Pusan in this like windowless bedroom. And even though they probably ran off with a duffel bag of money, old habits die hard because they're eating a bowl of japaghetti and drinking a couple of beers. And Stacy's dad picks up his phone to Gia's mom and shows her. It's Yura. Yabaseo, <clears throat> hello? It's hard to find you. Why did you hide? We're all in the same boat. Oh, no, it's not because we couldn't trust you, Yura. Miss Yura, you have to believe this. It's just uh, we couldn't trust my daughter. Just trust me now. I would never abandon my family. How about going to China for a while? Shanghai is beautiful. You could also have some fun in the water in Suzhou. <laughs> yeah. So the way that Stacy's dad and Gia's mom are enthusiastic about this, as if Yura isn't obviously planning to drown them in a Chinese river or something like Tell me if I'm just paranoid, but if someone tells me they want to send me to have, quote, fun in the water, I'm disappearing. I'm changing my identity. Social security number changed. Everything changed. Meanwhile, back at work, the besties, Gia, Hannah, and Mrs. Yang are taking their 76th coffee break because nobody in this office freaking works. And Mrs. Yang is going on about her husband and her like deadbeat husband life. And she's like, aren't I pathetic? At this age, when I feel anxious, I have nowhere to go but work. Because you have friends here, Mrs. Yang. I was worried about you and I was going to go see you anyway. No, it's okay. I'm going to barge in tonight. I already reported him for adultery. Gia thinks to herself, oh shoot, that's true. This is before the adultery law was abolished. So you can report people for cheating. This adultery is illegal. Yeah. Mm. Punishable by law in Korea until 2015, which is like so unserious. <laughs> okay. Wonder why they changed it. Oh, because I think there was a poll done recently that was like 60% of Koreans be cheating on their significant other. <laughs> yeah, bro, it was a wild ass number. And then my mom was saying, like, you think, you think it's all the men, right? And she's like, every girlfriend I know in Korea got like 25 boyfriends. I'm like, mom, your friends are 60. They're 60. What are you saying right now? And she's like, no, they're 60, but their boyfriends, like 40. I'm like, ah! What? I gotta get out of here. What? Yeah, because I guess they still look young. <laughs> 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 
Anyway, Mrs. Yang continues. Whenever I was admitted to the hospital, he brought her home. So I told him I was being admitted to the hospital today. His car dash cam caught them doing dirty things in the car, but there's no video. I think it's broken. And the police said audio isn't enough proof. So I'm going to barge into our apartment today and I'm going to catch them cheating. Ridiculous, right? I mean, I didn't want to go this far, but I made up my mind and I broke the door lock on my way out. (gasps) Do you guys remember Gia's door lock was broken when she died? That means she's going to go home? Yes, and die. Yes. And Gia's freaking the fork out and she's like, Mrs. Yang, can I come with you today? Gia's having war flashbacks right now. So the girlies orchestrate a stakeout. And like, this was so serious. The scene before this, Gia's like, oh my God, oh my God, she's going to die tonight. But um, the stakeout is so unserious. They've got these two police officers sitting in the front seat, but they're wearing like the bright yellow traffic cop vest. Yeah. <laughs> and they've got like digital cameras. Like they got vlogging cameras to gather the evidence of adultery, right? And then Gia and Mrs. Yang are just in the back and it's just weird. At some point, they do spot the mistress walking towards the building. Is that her? Yes, it is her. And Gia tries to comfort her, okay? And the cops are like, okay, your husband went in 30 minutes ago. Let's go in in 10 minutes. As if deadbeat wouldn't be done already by then. (laughs) Okay, like get out of here. Y'all should bust in in 10 seconds. (laughs) Nothing more, nothing less. It's the perfect amount of time for him. And when they get to the front door, everything keeps going from real time to flashback. Gia seeing everything play out the same. The broken lock on the door. The red stilettos in the hallway. Gia's face starts to go pale. And while they stomp around the room, that stinky little bitch, okay, walks out of the bathroom to see what the fork is going on and the deadbeat is eating a tin of candy. Do you remember the tin of candy, Stacey's candy that shattered mm. all over the floor? Mm-hmm. And they're fully clothed though. Uh, and they're coming out of different rooms. And the cop flashes the camera in the deadbeat's <sighs> eyes and makes it drop, he drops the whole candy onto the floor and Gia is having PTSD right now. The same thing happened. And at this point, Gia is certain someone is more than likely gonna die tonight. The candy has fallen right before she got pushed onto the glass coffee table and she looks over in the living room, a glass coffee table. So Deadbeat ignores the fact that there's two police officers and he just talks directly to Mrs. Yang because can I just tell you something? Can I tell you something? Can I show you something? The police in Korea don't have guns. Mm -hmm. The investigators do. So like regular police, like they're treated like traffic cops. (laughs) So like nobody takes them seriously. Yeah. That's Probably all worse say. than traffic cops. Though. Worse than traffic cops. I'm right. still scared of traffic cops here. Yeah. yeah, but no, in Korea, it's like you don't even really acknowledge their presence. <laughs> so that's what Deadbeat is doing. Deadbeat is like, what? What is this, huh? What's going on? Hey, why are you here at this hour? Aren't you supposed to be at the hospital? Which is like a very interesting way to address your wife that lives there. When you just got caught with another woman in the house yeah, in like, front of two cops. Exactly. <laughs> And like, what is Gia doing here? I'd be like, what are you? Yeah. Who are you? But things start to click for Deadbeat and his little stinky bitch. So she points to the dinner table full of Tupperware and starts to explain. He said you were in the hospital, Mrs. Yang. I came to give some side dishes. Maybe I was out of line. I see him at the restaurant often, so I considered him part of the family. Dang, she's quick. Mrs. Yang is watching her tell a bold-faced lie and she just scoffs because she literally saw them making out and she heard them doing it on the car dash cam, remember? Oh. The audio. Mrs. Yang is giving like looks like a cinnamon roll but can kill you. Like she looks angry and the deadbeat is getting more and more offended. <laughs> yeah, do you, did you think I was cheating or something? Do, do you look down on me because I work for your dad? Mrs. Yang looks pissed, but also defeated, but also a little embarrassed. She wanted to bust in and catch him in the act. You two, what? Us two, what? Huh? Forget it. Just leave, all of you. And he points at the the side girl. Get out. Hey, you two, don't bring anything saying that you're worried anymore. (sighs) Jesus, you're humiliating me now. The stinky bitch is bowing and apologizing as she walks out the door behind the two police officers who are also leaving. But Mrs. Yang is still standing there, and so is Gia. Gia is holding Mrs. Yang. Like, she looks like... She looks like she's ready to throw down 99 pounds and all. Yeah. And Deadbeat gets right in front of Gia's face. Get out. You should go, Gia. It's okay. I'll talk to him alone. Gia hesitates. So Deadbeat asks her again. What? You're not going to leave? But as Gia's scoping out the scene, she notices the coffee table made out of entirely glass and she makes her decision. 
I'll leave. But before I go, she lets go of Mrs. Yang's arm, goes to the right corner of golf clubs, and she gets it and smashes the table. She keeps swinging and swinging. It smashes into like a million pieces. I don't know why she couldn't have just like moved it out the way. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Because like, I feel like shattered glass is also dangerous. Yeah. yeah but yeah. she just like has her own little moment smashing it. And She's they're all just... <laughs> Problem solved. Fate eliminated. <laughs> Fate, I won. And Mrs. Yang is looking at her like, oh, I didn't know she's that crazy. Like, I am so confused who I'm working with. What's going on? And when Gia's done, she points the club at Deadbeat like a sword and gives him one last warning. If you touch her, I'll make you pay. <laughs> and Mrs. Yang is like, what the f- what is going on? The deadbeat is like, you're crazy. But Gurley is a judo queen with a nine iron. So are you really going to act bold? No, he shuts up. The cops hear all the noise. They run back in and they hold Gia back. She's not even doing anything. She's just whipping around the golf club and deadbeat. Suddenly he's angry because she's being held back. <laughs> I'm going to charge you with this. Isn't this property damage? This woman used the golf club. And Mrs. Yang, who has been quietly on the side trying to find the words, she finally snaps and she screams, stop it. And she runs over to deadbeat husband. You are so shameless. Are you happy you weren't caught? No, I know what you did in the car. What, you wonder how much insurance money you'll get if I die? That's what you said oh. in the car. You laughed oh about it. God. Are you two even human? What? Our daughter sits in that car. Aren't you ashamed? You're a terrible person. The whole time the cops are standing there like a couple of extras and they're like oh they're restraining Gia by like holding the edges of her jacket with the tips of their fingers <laughs> <laughs> like they're so fucking unreal right now and the deadbeat is like what are you saying you don't even have any proof hey that's and Mrs. Yang slaps him hard across the face but once that registers what the fork she just did he shoves her <gasps> and Mrs. Yang falls exactly like Gia in slow motion and onto the shattered glass. If Gia hadn't broken the coffee table, Mrs. Yang would have died that day. Gia panics, literally sees her life flash before her eyes, runs over to Mrs. Yang, and she's screaming, you crazy fucking bastard! And the cops suddenly remember, oh my God, assault is illegal. So they grab Gia and they grab Deadbeat and they take them all away. And it's like a whole freaking thing, okay? Anyway, Gia and Mrs. Yang are at the police station and... <laughs> Richard and Mr. Lee rush in and it's like a Wattpad. It's like a Wattpad why moment. Why is Mr. Lee everywhere? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Why is he even called? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You are not even... Oh, he's UNK's attorney. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, true, he's everywhere and I don't know why. Yeah. Like, I didn't know attorneys were that busy, you know? Like, do they really have to be everywhere busy? I thought they just yeah. stay in the office. Like, I thought uh, attorneys are never available. They're never available, <laughs> you know I mean? bro. Yeah, because they're doing this shit. <laughs> they're bailing their girlies out of jail. Richard's like, are you okay, Gia? So both men escort their respective ladies out of the uh, police station. And Gia reminds Mrs. Yang, I'll come back tomorrow after work. Don't do anything until then. <laughs> Thanks, Gia, but it's my business. So I can handle it myself. I realized earlier, I don't think he's going to break up that easily. So I guess I'm going to need to find a divorce attorney. Gia's panicking. No, don't ever meet him alone. Just call me. I'm going to come. Why are you saying such strange things? You're acting very weird tonight, Gia. I mean, I guess if somebody smashed my living room furniture out of nowhere with a golf club after I caught my husband cheating, I'd be like, <laughs> whoa, like that's not even your husband, boo-boo. Like I should be doing that. And Gia's like, I, I know that, but you would have gotten really hurt if it wasn't for me earlier. Just do as I say, just this once, please. And then Daddy Lee cuts in with his hands in his pockets. He honestly never takes a break from mewing. Like the men in this series, they just be fucking mewing. You know what mewing is? It's like the model face. Like the men. <laughs> That's the men model face. He'd be doing that the whole series, okay? And he's like, I'll be by your side. You said you need a lawyer. You can talk to me. <laughs> Gia hesitates, but Richard reassures her. We can trust him. Don't worry. He always do as he says. Now, back at Richard's place, Gia looks at him confused. My fate is going to someone else. I don't think it's a coincidence. If the stress from her indifferent husband caused her cancer, where did the fate of her being killed by him come from? The broken door lock, the red high heels, the candy tin, husband having an affair with someone else. Are those scumbags after the insurance money? That's what she's... Jackpot. Mrs. Yang didn't tell Gia, but she heard the audio from the black box that her deadbeat husband literally says, I'll take care of you when my wife dies with the insurance money. And Gia's like, I know what I have to do, Richard. I have to seduce Michael. 
What? Because Michael must have an affair and does not, he needs to not care if his wife dies. And speaking of the original asshat, Michael's already halfway there. He's spending every waking moment with Yura as if he's her emotional support dog while he's completely ignoring his wife, Stacy. When he sees his phone ring, he silences all calls coming from Stacy Jung Jia's friend. That's the caller ID for his wife. Stacy Jung Jia's friend. He never changed it. His wife's caller ID <laughs> yeah, is Stacey. Gia's friend. Gia's friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I the mean, hell? it's like really dumb though to leave that as her caller ID and then to ignore her phone calls from a woman that you know is mentally unstable and ready to, I don't know, commit all the degrees of homicide. Anyway, back to Gia's plan. Gia's like, no, I have to make Michael think that he needs to kill her. I know it's going to upset you, but I have to do it. If I don't give the fate of being killed by a cheating husband to Stacey, Mrs. Yang is going to die. Can I do this? I love it. These K-dramas. I know. And Richard looks out his window like the true Tebal daddy in distress, but he finally gives in because the way she's asking, can I do this, is like so PTSD trauma. Like, you don't need a man's permission. You do whatever you want. And so Richard, he hates this idea, but he sits down. Okay, do whatever you want. I will help you. Slay, supportive king, okay? <laughs> so Gia pulls out the red stilettos from the back of her closet and starts plotting a murder, literally. She walks into work with Richard the next day wearing those red heels that will inevitably save Mrs. Yang's life, hopefully. Richard immediately gets to work. He makes his one appearance for the day by walking over to the newest member of the marketing team one and giving him the lead on the meal kit project. Michael's seeing all of this play out and he sees Gia visibly upset at the decision. Because that's her project. That's been her baby. Who's this new kid? Why is he getting it? And Michael also sees Gia jump up from her seat to confront Richard in the stairwell. So Michael goes to listen. And Gia's screaming, This isn't right, Mr. Yu. You chose money over me, Gia. Did you not see this coming? You can't have it both ways. Fine, I'll find a new job. In return, let me finish the meal kit project. This project belongs to Mrs. Yang and me. It belongs to the company, Gia. Sir, don't let personal matter. I gave you the meal kit project because of my personal feelings towards you. I don't want to see your face anymore. So take the day off and resigning would be better. Who's saying this? Richard to Gia. Dang. I know Richard is acting, but he was too good. Like I would, I would cry. Anyway, it works. Michael's been sitting there listening to it all play out. And he's like, wait a freaking, it makes sense. It makes so much sense. He goes into the break room and his job duties include wrapping company welcome gifts. So he's doing that. Yeah, he got <laughs> demoted heavily. And he's thinking out loud because he has to think out loud to grasp concepts that are a little too complicated. So the money, because remember, they found out that G has $80 million of real estate in her name. Mm -hmm. So the money... And then he, she broke up with, oh, that makes sense. He's like, I get it. Tebar's grandpa probably gave her the money, like the K-dramas being like, stay away from my grandson. And then she took the money and they broke up because he's thinking that makes more sense because why would Richard give her money? She's just a girl. Girls ah. are idiot. Ah. <laughs> Gia walks in. Why are you doing this alone? Uh, what? My position turned to crap because of somebody. So I have to wrap presents. As I said before, none of this would have happened if you didn't start seeing Stacy. Don't be ridiculous. You screwed me over so that you could switch to Mr. You. You're right. I am. But the situation has changed, Michael. Do you want to have a drink with me later? Gia takes him to an upscale bar and they sit in a couple lounge chairs while Gia catches him up on everything, right? So 60 million. Michael's acting clueless. Yeah, the chairman said that he'd gladly pay me that much if I broke up with Richard. I mean, of course, it's not all cash. There's real estate, too. He took care of all the taxes as well. So I don't even know how much money I have. I have an asset manager. I mean, Mr. Yu, Richard is pretty angry with me for taking the money from the chairman. But what else was I supposed to do? Michael takes a quick tinkle in the men's bathroom and he's like, this makes so much sense. But you know what makes more sense? marrying Gia <laughs> oh yeah I gotta marry Gia because if he marries Gia then he gets all that money <sighs> very good very good <laughs> Meanwhile, when he gets back, Gia is working him like a little puzzle, okay? Like a four-piece puzzle. He's very simple. And she reminisces on all the all-you-can-eat barbecue spot that they always went to when they were broke and how they would eat nothing throughout the day just so that they could fill up more at that restaurant. And Michael says, why would you want to remember something so pathetic? Oh. 
Why is that pathetic, Michael? It was so cute. Back then, everything felt precious and priceless when I was with you. Money wasn't that important to me. I mean, I feel like she just backhand roasted him, okay? And she's like, <laughs> you know, I really liked you. Well, there was no one like you, Gia. You could put up with me too. So you and Richard really broke up? I thought so, but actually, I almost had a big accident recently. Oh, oh, really? Like, a, what, what kind of accident? It was with a dump truck, so I could have died. But Mr. Yu came out of nowhere, and everything got so complicated. I think he, he took the fall from me. Do you know who the driver of that truck was? What? No. How would I know that? I, would, I didn't even know that you were almost in an accident. It was Stacy's dad. <laughs> Michael looks like someone just plucked his little blueberries. You didn't know she'd stoop so low, did you? I didn't either. I guess she really hates me, but I can't believe she tried to get her dad to kill me. She's crazy. I didn't even see her true colors with this accident. Richard put someone on me. If not, I mean, how could he have shown up? He was watching me. We hadn't met since we broke up. It doesn't make any sense. Ugh, I just don't know. I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm being watched and I'm scared. What do I do? <laughs> and I so you haven't come to work because it was because of me. I couldn't just leave Richard. You know, fortunately, he wasn't hurt that badly. So he's been discharged from the hospital. But when I told him that we were through, he told me to resign. Michael starts to gaslight himself. She is telling the truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Michael and Gia start making their way to the train station. So she lets Michael's pea brain do some calculations. He's thinking to himself, something felt off and this was it. Yes, Richard is rich. So she was right to switch over to him. And she was also right to break up with him for $80 million. She wouldn't make a good wife for a rich guy anyway. If she has $80 million, then I shouldn't kill her. Because if she dies, her mom and the others will split the money, but nothing's going to come to me. But if I seduce her again, that $80 million is mine. Gia lets the frog boil itself, and then she strikes. Can you break up with Stacy? What? Oh. <laughs> you know how scary she is now. Come back to me. I can't do this alone. Actually, never mind. I should go. Michael grabs Gia as she's walking away and hugs her tight. Of course, Hawkeye Richard is parked like five feet away in his brand new Porsche Panera Bread muffin wagon, and Michael does not notice him. Michael's like, I'll call you. Gia watches Michael walk away, and she makes eye contact with Richard. Yikes. She gets in his muffin bread mobile and awkwardly looks over to see how mad he is. I'm sorry. I'm sure you hated seeing that. Richard doesn't say anything. He just gets out of his car and Gia lets out a huge breath like, this is it. I ruined it. But he pulls her out of the car and just hugs her. Because it's like, again, why are you apologizing like that? It's so clear she doesn't have feelings for Michael, clearly. But like the fact that she feels the need to apologize to him so he hugs her and she's like you like me a lot don't you and he's like well earlier michael seemed to be regretting what he did michael no he's not regretting what he did and breaking up with me he's probably crunching numbers in his head right now meanwhile michael does look pretty happy with himself he's now locked in two millionaire women who are fawning over his micro pp he gets a call from Yura at this time not stacy so he immediately picks up hey are you coming today I was just about to call. I think things are going to get easier. I just met with Gia Kang. She has no idea that I was involved. So you just have to take care of Gia's mom and Stacey's dad. And then she'll come to me with $80 million. And then you can get you and Kay or Richard Yu. Do whatever you want with him. He'll, we'll become each other's support forever. I get to marry Gia. You get to marry Richard. Yeah, I see. So nice and easy, isn't it? She hangs up the call and she turns to her bodyguard who's had like three whole lines for the past few episodes. He just stands there. He underestimates his ex-girlfriend. I told you, didn't I? Men are not scared of the woman that they've already slept with. Where's Stacy's dad and Gia's mom? Apparently, living their best lives. They're still in that same bunker bedroom, but now they're gorging on takeout and watching TV, and Yura turns to her bodyguard. Let's kill him. The bodyguard is like, girly, I get paid to stand by the wall and open your car door. Like, please do not loot me into this. P -p Pardon? Is it because of what Michael said? No, nothing bad can come from it. If Gia wants to return to Michael, she shouldn't find out that we tried to kill her and that he tried to kill her. And even if she's up to something, she can't prove anything with those two gone. Also, it's easier than keeping them in China, isn't it? So while you're as plotting to casually kill off two main characters, Michael also seems to think getting rid of people is easy. He finally comes home and he talks to Stacy. Let's get a divorce. We don't have kids. Honestly, I have no reason to live with you. Nothing good came from being with you. All right. You still can't reach your dad, right? By any chance, 
Did you meet Gia Kang? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw her at work. Why do you ask? I thought about it. If you and Gia get back together, because she has $80 million now, then I'll be the only one getting screwed over. Oh. Stacy smiles this crooked, terrifying smile. Anyway, remember that one time Euro went to see LB at the restaurant? Uh-huh. Well, she bought the building and closed down the restaurant and LB gets to work one day and th- they're out of business. They're out of freaking business. And guess who walks out the door to all the employees? The door opens and she's got a black leather coat on and Yura struts out and she's smiling at LB. She ushers him inside. Double the pay. Your boss here suddenly decided to sell me the restaurant at double the market price. It was a good choice. And it's a choice that you can make too. If you help me, this expensive restaurant will be yours. What do I have to do? You have two choices. One, take the restaurant. Or two, you lose your job. Now it's Albie's turn to drink his weight in alcohol. We see him drinking by himself at a fancy bar. And it just makes it, it, just makes it seem like Yura makes everybody want to drink. If you spend two seconds with her, you need a shot of vodka. But he also calls someone to join him. Hannah runs him. Chef, my heart fluttered when you contacted me. What's going on? <laughs> she sits down next to the miserable Albie. Well, when Gia turned me down, it was so nice to get comforted by you. So I called you again. Bruh, he's so bad with women. <laughs> well, is something wrong? I'm unemployed now. Oh. At least we know he's one of the good ones. We don't know what Yura's offer was, but uh-huh. he turned it down. Why? Come on, you're still famous and handsome. Most importantly, your food tastes good. So you might be unemployed for a second, but the industry's small. The restaurant suddenly closed, so all the gossipers will talk about me. Yeah, I I figured. It's the same with me. People don't believe us without even trying to get to know us, you know? If only a half-decent chef appeared. Oh my gosh! Why did I think of this? Oh my god, oh my god, this is perfect! So the next day, Hannah brings in LB into the office. He's going to be the first meal kit chef launch! Oh, shit, that's so good. And Gia's like, why didn't I think of you? And Albie's like, I don't know if I can be of any help. He's such an insecure guy, okay? But anyway, he asked Gia to talk to her privately. And honestly, it makes Hannah feel a little bit jealous, but it's fine. And Albie honestly tells Gia everything. Thanks for telling me, and I'm so sorry. No harm will go to you. That's not why I'm telling you. And he looks over at Hannah's desk. Anyway, I didn't tell Hannah. So uh, we don't know what Yura's offer was. But Gia immediately calls Richard to report this new information. Yura bought Werther and asked Albie to help her. He said no and she fired him. And she didn't tell him what she needed help with. I know what it is. Don't worry. I'll call you later, okay? I'm with someone right now. So first of all, Gia's like, how do you already know? And second of all, who the fork are you with right now? And we see Richard sitting at a cafe and the man sitting next to him or across from him is Yura's bodyguard. You have two choices. One, help me, or two, go down with Yura. I'm sure you know which one to choose if you're not a fool. But these crossovers is out of this world. Yeah, they gotta stop collabing, okay? Yeah. It's too much. What do I have to do? So the two guys are having a jawline contest. Yeah, they're like mewing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, G is back to work, but Girlie's phone won't stop ringing. This is Gia Kang, Marketing Team One. Hello, this is Michael Park from UNK Marketing Team 3. Gia looks across the room and sees Michael and she tries to give him a nice little smile and then turns back around, okay? I was wondering if you could meet me tonight, Miss Gia Kang. For the mistakes I've made, I want to treat you. I'd be grateful. I'm always ready. In pure torture, she grabs the red stilettos from her file cabinet. (laughs) I hope it marks a new beginning. You can look forward to it. (laughs) <laughs> but she ends up getting a call from Richard. So she puts Musty Mike on hold and answers her cell phone. Yes, Michael Park already has a woman. What? Richard tells her everything that went down with him, the meeting with Yura's bodyguard. So Michael and Yura, they're like becoming a thing. So that means as long as he cheats with Yura, she, he doesn't need to cheat with Gia. Mm. He just needs to cheat with someone on his wife, okay? And now so the bodyguard, does, yes. It, does Yura actually like Michael? Like when they say it's a thing, like, does she actually like him? No, I think she just likes to fuck around. And I think she's trying to see how she can use him. Mm. And she thinks that one of the best ways to keep him under her finger is to probably sleep with him. Mm. To make him feel like he can be the next head of Cloud Air. 
Yeah, and uh, the bodyguard brings a gift to Yura. It's an authentic box with new red stilettos and a candy tin right next to it. Remember, candy tin, the stilettos are important. Oh. And Yura's like, what is this? And the bodyguard says, I'm not sure. Someone brought it in today. Shall I get rid of it? She opens up the box and pops a yellow candy in her mouth. No, just leave it. Reminds me of the good old days. Spring is my favorite season. There's something about the sunshine and the air. It's in the season to thrive. I mean, in everything from your mental health to your bank account, it is the season. Making progress though with your finances is just not easy, but with the right checking account, it can definitely feel easier. Chime's online checking account has a lot of really useful features like fee-free overdraft of up to $200 for eligible members. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for Spot Me, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a debit card purchase or cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. Plus you get paid up to two days early with direct deposit all while managing your money on the go 24 seven. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. And there are no fees for accessing one of the 60,000 Chime friendly ATMs. You can use the Chime app to find the nearest ATM and you can easily use Chime to even wire money to your friends even if they're not Chime users, which they should be. So sign up for Chime today. Joining takes just minutes. Get started at chime.com slash baking. That's chime.com slash baking. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA, members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. So the scene has been set and... Gia just found out she doesn't need to seduce Michael anymore. So she picks up the phone to Musty Mike again and says, thanks for waiting, but I don't think I can do dinner anymore. Oh, is it because of work? I get it. I'm free tomorrow too, Gia. I'm even free on the weekends. It's the infamous Gia Kang. I'm free whenever. (laughs) No, what I meant is, Michael, I'll never do business with you. What? The only thing you know how to do is sugarcoat things. You'll ruin everything that you touch and aim for insurance fraud. You're too incompetent to work with. And what really surprised me is your HR method. You especially excel at recruiting female talent. I was surprised since you just got married. You're amazing in genuinely so many ways, in all the bad ways. Gia looks over her shoulder to give him a small smile. Good luck in the future. And then she slams the phone down and Hannah's like, wow, client must've been a real scumbag. Michael is giving just Stacy level evil eyes. He looks unhinged. He squeezes his pen so tightly it breaks. But Richard and Gia are setting the scene for the love triangle that is Michael, Stacy, and Yura. Yura is also quite literally setting up a scene, a murder scene. She walks out of an abandoned building to a blue van and a pair of gloved hands is adding empty soju bottles and a note in the front seat. One of the letter reads, Gia, I'm so ashamed of myself. And in the back seat are Stacy's dad and Gia's mom and they're unconscious and Yura looks over at her bodyguard. What are you waiting for? Do you want me to light it? So they light the coal. The briquettes, yeah. And they close the door and the van starts to fill with smoke and she stands there. (sighs) It's my first time seeing someone die. It's a bit boring, but I still feel better. She walks off contemplating how hard her life is. I feel like I don't fit in Korea. Nothing goes right here. And about that restaurant that I bought, what'd I do with that? Should we tear it down? But you're about to have another unexpected problem. Stacy's been sitting at home for weeks, being told to lay low, being ignored by her husband, and she's sick of it. She texts Michael, okay, fine, let's divorce. And then she makes a call. Hello, this is Yura. Hello, my name is Stacy. There is like so much going on right now. Like people be killing people, bulldozing Michelin star restaurants. And Gia is still working late at night. All the lights are off and she's sitting at her desk alone, but it doesn't seem like she's working on the meal kit. She's leaning back in her chair there. It fits perfectly. Why is everything working out so well? And she gets a text from Richard. I'll be there in five minutes. Finish up and come down. So she's the only one in the office. But before she starts grabbing her purse, her office phone rings and she's oblivious. She picks it up. Hi, this is Gia King of Marketing Team One. (sighs) She just hears breathing on the other line. And then a laugh. Like a distorted... (laughs) Who is this? She doesn't even want to know the answer. She slams the receiver down and she's looking freaked out. And then it rings again and she picks it up. Who are you? (sighs) Why did you call the office phone? It's Richard. I'm sorry, you didn't pick up your phone. Oh, shoot. My phone is already in my purse. I'm sorry. I thought I was closer, but I'll actually be there in 15 minutes. 
But behind her, we see a shadow of a person rushing through one doorway to the next. And she starts hearing thumping. And Gia starts walking towards the noise. Like, why? She reaches the break room and it's just water dripping from the sink. Okay, that's weird. She turns it off and then the lights shut off. And she rushes over to her desk to grab her things when she hears Michael's voice. Gia Kang. And he chases her around in the freaking office. And she's like hiding behind the cubicles. It's so dark. There's no lights on. And for some fucking reason, she doesn't take off her stilettos and use it as like a weapon because she's still got to look good in all these scenes. And he's like laughing maniacally. And he's just taunting her. You should have known your place. That's the problem with women. Was it fun messing with me? And then he reaches for her he finds her hiding behind a cubicle and then he grabs her and slams her up against the wall you've got a strong stomach i like money but aren't those rich people disgusting they disgust me people like richard and he's screaming how dare you mess with me let go of me let go what are you scared why did you make a mockery out of me huh gia i really wanted to go back to you i wanted to try hard this time to make it work you tried to kill me you tricked me, Gia. You treated me like crap. Michael could kill her right now, but Gia's not going to beg. He killed her once, but this time she's not scared. You can kill others, but your life's that precious, huh, Michael? I thought about how to pay you back. I could just give Stacy to you, but how do I send you to hell? What? Hell? Do you want to die? He holds up his hand to slap her, but she starts laughing. This is it, huh? Kill me. But make sure to kill me for sure this time or I will kill you. Michael backs off for a second and then he grabs Gia's throat with both hands and he starts screaming, die. You want me to kill you? So I will die. And Gia starts laughing. Are you laughing? Just die. And then she's like, kill me. And he's gripping her neck tighter and tighter. And honestly, it's like a lot because you can literally hear him squeezing tighter like a rubber band about to snap and you can like hear her. It's a lot. So her body goes limp and Michael is slowly holding her neck as she falls to the ground. But at the last moment, a force whacks Michael and he gets flung to the side and Gia's on the ground and Richard is trying to get her to wake up. Gia, are you okay? Gia, 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 wake up. Michael gets up slowly. You disgusting bastard. And in the end, Gia's laying on the cold, hard office floor. And her last thoughts are, was I destined to die in Michael's hands? And that's the end. No, I'm just kidding. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> okay. Michael gets back on his feet, tries to attack Richard, but he gets one punch in before Richard grabs him like a potato sack, lifts him to his feet, flips him over onto the office desk. And with his broken hand, he starts pummeling Michael's face. He slams him around so hard. Like, cause you know, the cracks and he has a bandaged hand. You can see the blood seeping out again. Mm. Yeah. Meanwhile, on a less violent note, Mr. Lee is driving Mrs. Yang home from a meeting with um, the divorce attorney and all of that. You know, he's got the three S's. I thought he's the attorney. Yeah, he is. Yeah. But like, I think he's got like a whole team. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's the three S's that she needed. Single, stable job, sexy, right? And then he's like, tell me again. I won't answer my husband's calls. And if he comes to the house, I won't answer the door and I'll call you right away. Honestly, it's giving father. It's giving girl dad. Like, he's kind of cute the way he's so protective. Mr. Lee, thank you for driving me to the hospital every time like this. But I don't... You don't have to thank me for that. It's work for me. I get paid a lot of money from UNK and I do what my employer wants. That is all. I do not do this for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. And she's about to get out. But then she stops and says, but you told me that you cared about me. And Mr. Lee looks very annoyed. Okay. And he makes eye contact and he starts getting flustered and he says under his breath. So she still says everything she wants to say, huh? And it's like why a, am i kind of more into their right? <laughs> their storyline yes i was getting more into that are we just old <laughs> like why are we into the adjushi storyline you know what i mean like yeah. g and richard are the young ones and we're like yeah. give us that like old slow pace yeah we need a season two but on them <laughs> yes and on hannah and lb they're gonna start dating they're gonna start dating yeah so it's like a cute little moment interrupted by a call from richard to mr lee at this hour hello what is it what's wrong I'm at the police station. The police station? I'll be right there. No, go to the hospital instead. So Mr. Lee and Mrs. Yang exchange glances and they immediately rush over to the hospital. They sprint through the hospital, the emergency department, and they find Gia on a stretcher, unconscious. Her eyes are red. Her face is pale. She's got bandages around her neck. And the nurse comes in. Her breathing and pulse are stable now, but she has a fever. So we'll check up on her when she wakes up. It was an assault. So she came in with the police. I'll get you her record. Meanwhile, Richard is sitting back on the floor after his one free phone call because he's been detained at the police station. And in the cell right next to him is Michael, like literally just separated by bars. And it's funny to see them in like these suits, just like in jail. Two boys sitting in a jail. 
They might kiss. <laughs> okay? And just like the voices in my head, Michael won't shut the fuck up. Hey, I'm going to ruin your life. Okay? So brace yourself. I'm going to tell the media. Third generation Cheba assaulted me. You can't cover things up these days. I have nothing to lose now thanks to you. But isn't Gia too inferior to ruin your life over? She's nothing but skin and bones anyway. What's there to look at? Richard looks like he's regretting not killing Michael back at the office. He's like facing the wall trying to zone him out, but he keeps going. He keeps yapping. He's Mr. F***ing yaps a lot. Mr. You, you want some advice? Don't trust Gia. Do you know why I went mad in the head? Gia makes people lose their minds. Richard finally has something worth saying. Gia and I aren't the only ones that ruined you. It's your trash personality. Look how you beat me up. Is your personality any better? You can't just beat people up just because you can fight. It's a bit rich considering what you did to a woman half your size. Oh. What? Richard stands up. So now his 10 foot frame is skyscraping above Michael. You seek equality when you're at a disadvantage and strength when you're at an advantage. I hate using my strength, but never on you. And after Richard Alpha Male, CEO, Fortune 600 executive of your Panini, finishes asserting his dominance, the doors of his cell swing open and the police officer lets him out. Mr. Lee, obviously, bails him out. And when Richard starts to leave, Michael starts to panic. Well, what about me? Why can't I come out? What about me? Yeah, because that's how it fucking works, Michael. Michael is really acting like Mr. Lee should have bailed him out too. Like he didn't just try to strangle Gia an hour ago. Like, I'm sorry, what? Richard turns back to him and says one last time. Do you really think you can't go any lower? You're wrong. Michael is screaming out of his cell. One law for the rich and another one for the poor. Meanwhile, Mr. Lee is trailing Richard's lead while they're walking out of the police station. Richard does not spare a single second. CEO is on a CEO shit. He's throwing down some executive orders. Michael is fired as of today for assaulting a colleague and violating the rules. Find uh -huh. anything else you can on him. I checked during his affair incident, Richard. Unpaid corporate credit card statements and he illegally treated clients. Good. Doesn't he have company loans? I'll ask the bank for a repayment request. I'll add assault, injury, and anything else that I can think of. And Gia Kang, she's at home. Richard looks alarmed like she should still be in the hospital. It's what she wanted, sir. I happened to be with Mrs. Yang, so I left Mrs. Yang with her, but she doesn't look too good. You said there was a debt that Michael hasn't paid off, right? Put some pressure on that or buy the bonds. I'll look into it. So Richard leaves Mr. Lee to handle all the details and he rushes back home to see Gia. And as he's walking in through the front door, he sees Mrs. Yang heading out. How's Gia? She's not looking good. I think she'll be better if she sleeps. So I'm going to go grab some milk for her. There's nothing to eat in her house. Are you okay? Yes. Thank you. I'll take it from here. You should go home and rest. Y'all, Mrs. Yang wasn't lying when she said that Gia's not doing good. Gia's having a panic attack. She's on the couch, knees to her chest, and her hands are covering her mouth as she's hyperventilating. And then she starts rubbing her chest with her fist, but then she starts punching herself and she starts punching her chest harder. I think it's more like she's trying to breathe or something type of punching, or she's like just so upset and frustrated. And then her arm freezes midair, and we see a strong, powerful CEO billionaire hand wrap around her wrist. And she's like, Richard. And he doesn't say anything. And she, he just hugs her. And she's bawling. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. And she's got snot in her nose. But she looks at him. And his lip has the world's tiniest little cut. Like he could have gotten it from biting his lip a little too hard while trying to seduce Gia. But she freaks out. Were you hurt? What is that? Richard gently grabs her hand and kisses the back of her hand. And she just melts into his arms. And yeah, they go to sleep that night like that. Meanwhile, Stacy's trying to make her next move, her best one. Now that she's about to divorce Michael, she's going to make sure that her future is secure. I mean, she did just blackmail her dad and Gia's mom to kill her best friend Gia. So she needs to do something a little different. She gets dressed up, heads into her, and she walks down this long hallway. It looks like the hallway of some really upscale hotel. Actually, it looks like the hallway of like a swingers hotel. Like really cool <laughs> like bdsm vibes you know you know what i mean i'm not judging i think it's cool it's like a vibe but like you just know what kind of person she's gonna be meeting it's not gonna be it's not gonna be her pastor okay <laughs> <laughs> that's for fucking sure she does need jesus but it's not gonna be her pastor she walks in red carpet everything everything is red even the sofas are blood red and the woman sitting across from stacy dressed head to toe in red yura hello huh? Yura looks Stacy up and down. Is that all? Surely that can't be all, considering you call me because your husband's in my care. That's kind of too weak of a greeting, isn't it? 
But Stacy's not about to waste time. She's an efficient girly. She pulls out her phone from her purse, places it on the table, and presses play. Stacy has recorded the conversation that Yura had with Stacy's dad while they planned to hide the truck that they were trying to crash Gia into. And they literally talk about it like that. Like there's no code words. It's just like, oh yeah, the car that we were trying to commit vehicular homicide with, pummel Gia with, murder homicide her ass, that one, yeah, we're gonna get rid of it. Like basically talking about it like that. What? So Yura's eye starts to twitch. First, Yura looks shook that even Stacy managed to record that call. And then she looks even pissed off that she's being threatened by a commoner. It might also be the fact that Yura killed Stacy's parents after this phone call. But like, I digress, okay? <laughs> Whatever it is, Yura doesn't like it. She, she's sick of this shit. Stacy smirks. Poor people always try to keep a record as insurance. What do you want? Do you hate that I'm taking care of your father? Now, now that crushing Gia and killing her isn't so simple anymore, and you suddenly say, don't do anything. And then Michael suddenly asked me for a divorce and my dad won't pick up, so I realized I'm the one getting screwed over. <laughs> Judging by the look on your face, you're nothing special. Wait, who, who's saying that? Stacy. Saying that to, to, to Yura. To Yura. Like, uh -huh. You're not, nothing special? Oh, yeah. Goddamn. The look on Yura's face is like, I will dismember your entire bloodline right now and no one would ever know, okay? But Yura decides to keep it quiet. So I get to ask the questions now, Yura. What can you do for me? We don't know what Yura says, but Stacy leaves shaking with anger and Yura's bodyguard walks in to check on her and she's pissed. Yura's sitting there and she asks to nobody in particular, are the shrimps in Korea poisonous? Why don't they know their place? Have their parents' bodies been found? I'll check the police report. Make sure there's no news about Stacy's dad being dead. Stacy shouldn't feel threatened right now. Michael and Stacy, <laughs> can we take care of both of them at once? Speaking of the devil, Michael decides to use his only phone call on his rich mommy, Yura, and she rolls her eyes and takes a deep breath before she even picks up the phone. Hello? I'm at the police station right now. I'm sorry, but can I please ask you for a favor? Yura's obviously not going to do the dirty work herself, so she sends her bodyguard to bail Michael out. It's the next day, so it's like sunshine and rainbows when he gets out, and the bodyguard's pissed. You got out, but it's pretty serious. We may not be able to cover this one. What? What are you saying right now? You can't cover the fact that I tried to strangle Gia? It's not what we agreed upon. If we have to fight you and Kay head on, the burden on Miss Yura will be too big. The bodyguard starts walking away, and it's giving, find your own fucking ride home. But Michael's pissed. Yeah! What's with the attitude? Why do you talk to me like that? Who do you think you are? You're not the VP of Cloud Air. Oh. Bodyguard's done with Michael's bullshit, okay? He turns around and he punches Michael in the face. <laughs> Michael's hunched over, grabbing his nose. I feel like this is fan service, okay? And he's like, hey, you're not either. So don't be rude. <sighs> Unfortunately, Michael's still alive. Just like general statement, he's still alive. And he gets back on his feet. And he headbutts the bodyguard. And now the bodyguard's on the ground with blood running down his nose and Michael's on his feet. You only know how to fight in the ring, so you watch your mouth. You're just Yura's henchman. Don't act like you're my boss. And he spits on the bodyguard and gets a taxi home. And in the taxi, Yura is scolding him. Why would you give him a nosebleed? Is there a reason I can't? He gave me attitude, damn it. He's just worried about me. Since your wife came and threatened me today, you know, it was a little scary. What, my wife, Stacy. What, what about it? What, what did she do? She said you asked for a divorce. She's not going to go down alone and she won't let you get away alone. Is she out of her goddamn... Oh, hold on. Work is calling me. Hang up. I got to call you later. <laughs> While Michael was in the holding cell, Mr. Lee has been up all night ruining Michael's life and he's about to get phone call after phone call in this taxi ride home. Hello? It's Mr. Lee from UNK. Mr. Park, I called to say that you're fired as of today. <laughs> The way Michael shits in his seat, surprised, like he just punched the future CEO. What the fork are you acting surprised about? Like, yeah. it's so DeLulu. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Lee is like, you didn't come to work today. So the legal team has sent someone to deliver your written dismissal to your house. Mr. Lee is not playing because Michael gets a call from his mom next. Where are you? Someone from your workplace is here. They said that you're fired. They delivered your stuff in a box. What on earth have you been doing? Then he gets another one from UNK, but this time it's from like the banking division. I'm calling to inform you that your obligations to repay the UNK guaranteed loan is effective as of today. Damn it, he hangs up and the phone calls are just a start. The appetizer, okay? He spends the whole ride declining phone call after phone call after phone call and then he gets out in front of his mommy's house and he looks up and he sees six scary dudes in black suits <laughs> and leather and gold chains. You never wanna see a mother
wearing a suit and a gold chain because that man does not have a legal business. That man does not have an LLC, okay? I mean, he could. Yeah, he very much could, but not in Korea. Not in Korea. The gold chains and the suits, gangpe. That's what you call a gangster. They're just casually standing on the curb. They're doing the kimchi squat. They're spitting on the floor. <laughs> if I saw that, I would shit my Are pants. Actually? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. When Michael gets a uh, sir, why don't you pick up your call? They all start circling him. Like literally, <laughs> like a cheerleader circle around Michael. When trust is gone, we get a physical rights waiver signed, you know? They walk straight up to Michael's face and the leader presses his finger into Michael's chest. For those who don't pay back money, everyone, which hole do we poke to get money back? <laughs> hole, hole, what, 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 what hole? Pretty sure Michael gives the loan shark some convincing excuse because they barely wrap him up like no holes were touched he's just <laughs> rubbing a hard-boiled egg over his beaten and bruised face and he makes his way back into his mommy's guest bedroom and he's just he's going through a lot okay he's a survivor he's a hustler he's an entrepreneur because as soon as he gets back into his apartment he's looking at stacy's financial statements because let's be real what's a wife worth if she's not worth some money so he shuffles through her bank statements. She's cleaned them all out. She's emptied them so he can't get access. But then he remembers Stacy telling him that she has money in stocks. Oh my God. So he goes to the computer and starts praying to every single divine entity that he can think of. And he tries. He tries to get into her investment account. And the fact that Michael can guess her password on first try is so alarming. Like, bestie, is your password password? Or is it like Gia die, Gia die, one, two, three? Like, you know what I mean? And guess what? She has been working overtime because she has $60,000 in stocks. If Stacy's got money, Michael's thinking maybe she's got cash. He starts rummaging through her drawers and finds a suspicious looking paper bag. Like, guys, this cannot be real. It looks like she went to the bakery, bought a croissant, threw the croissant out, and then stuffed three stacks of cash into the paper bag. She's not an evil mastermind. She's evil, but not a mastermind, okay? Anyway, it's like another probably $30,000 that he finds. And he's so excited. Oh, yeah. So he's busy stealing all of Stacy's money. Meanwhile, Stacy is using Yura's money to stay in a luxury hotel. And while Stacy's taking a five-star hotel bath shower, she gets a phone call. So she rushes out the door because she's just acquired a very important date. She heads over to the vintage style bar, the same one that Gia took Michael to the other night for drinks. And there she sits with a little cocktail waiting until Richard walks over and sits right next to her. It's been a while. Stacy's trying to serve up that sweet, innocent Stacy special. Richard doesn't even smile at her. I was surprised to get your call. It's so nice to see you after so long. Stacy thinks she's about to steal Gia's man, but Richard is just here to practice his acting skills. He waves off the bartender and turns back to Stacy. Have you been well? Yes, I have. He stares at her. To be honest, I'm not doing that well, actually. Michael and I are getting a divorce. I left the house yesterday, and I'm staying in the hotel upstairs. I think I'm just going to take it easy for a minute. It must be the karma. I was blinded by love and I betrayed my only best friend, my other half, in the end. Anyway, I'm single now. Well, I guess the divorce news makes this easier to say. And he turns to her. Did you try to kill Gia? Oh. Stacy's smile drops. You can see her entire facial expressions change, even only through her mouth, okay? She's got the look of a predator about to become prey and she's about to attack. But Richard says something Stacy would have never guessed. I would have done the same thing. I know Gia and Michael are seeing each other again. Are they really seeing each other again? Stacy doesn't sound that shocked, but she looks like half of her face is about to start twitching. <laughs> Let's charge them with adultery. I'll let you know when and where to go. Stacy, if you want, I'll get you the best lawyer too. You can just fulfill your role as his legal spouse. <laughs> Why? Because it's not fair. Isn't your life ruined because of Michael? If you divorce, you won't be rewarded for your work at the company. You'll be left with nothing. That's true for me but what do you gain from this i want her back i like gia so i hate that she's with him i'm gonna make her come back to me so help me stacy's lip twitches she hates that tebo wants to be with gia even if gia cheats on him he still wants to be with her okay and she looks like a dog that you just would not want that close to you like she looks unhinged yeah yeah and she's just trying to fix the evil snarl from her face and she fake smiles can i ask you something why do you hate me so much? Because you're selfish. 
There are those who bite people around them, and you're that type, so I hate you. Oh, damn. But you don't even know me that well. You don't trust anyone, do you? That's because you're not trustworthy. You think everyone's just like you, so you can't trust them. <laughs> if you feel that way, what makes you think that we should be on the same team? <laughs> Didn't you ask me why I hated you? I never said I couldn't work with you. Let me know what you decide. And Richard leaves Stacy shook at the bar like Gurley is literally shaking. Like, do you need a Xanax? I get it though, because every time Stacy thinks she's doing something, she goes three steps backwards and she seems like she's in a trance. She gets back to her hotel room and she's slamming her fist against the wall and she's screaming, why? Why does everybody want Gia? <laughs> Meanwhile, Richard goes home to Gia. It went well. As you said, she asked me why I was helping her. I didn't think she'd believe me if I lied, so I mixed in some truth. Everything I said was true, except for the fact that it'll be Yura and Michael instead of you that she finds. Also, there's an insurance policy provided to company employees, a family life insurance plan. It compensates yourself, spouse, and immediate family if anybody dies. Meaning if Stacy dies, Michael could get insurance money. Mm -hmm. A notice will go to Michael soon. He doesn't know that such insurance exists, but he will soon. But he... Oh, 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 I see. The wife's company insurance policy. Uh huh. The stage is being set. So Gia and Richard, they're setting the scene. They're puppet masters. Meanwhile, Yura is trying to decide what to wear for her performance. She grabs the yellow candy out of the candy tin, but she quickly spits it out because Tebo girlies do not eat carbs. And she walks over to her gigantic shoe closet and she puts on her red stilettos. And her bodyguard is opening up all the curtains and he tries to reason with her. How about we return to Japan? Richard is moving more actively than before. He's pressuring Michael with his debt and private loans. He's not going to last long. And he hasn't given up on Stacy's dad and Gia's mom. He's got all the CCTV footage from the abandoned factory. He's not going to find anything, but nothing good can come from fighting you and Kay head on. Yura is honestly offended. She's way too deep in this game. Like she's, she's confused. You must not be confident seeing how you're telling me to run away. It's okay. His grandfather's different though. Unlike Richard, who's like a little flower in a greenhouse, grandpa's realistic. He knows how much of a nuisance a Cinderella can be. Saying that Gia is a Cinderella, like poor girl marrying into a rich family. Nuisance. So I guess that's why Yura still visits granddaddy. She knows that she can't get into Richard's pants, so she's gonna get into grandfather's heart. I don't know, okay? So they're playing Chinese chess, which like low-key, I'm kind of fire at. I just wanna say that right now, okay? Um, but it's not about me, but it is because I'm really good. Yura's not good though. She's getting checkmated by grandpa Yu. Checkmate. Yura's smiling, but you can see that she's pretty pissed from losing. Like she's got a crazy ego. I can never beat you, grandfather. You want everything, Yura, so I can read your hand. A good leader should know how to give up something that's not theirs. Okay, grandfather. She's saying okay, but she didn't look okay, okay? She, she thought this was going to go over better, but it's not. Because Richard walks in and greets his grandfather. But I guess in this episode, the whole theme is unwanted visitors just yapping in Richard's ear because Yura starts talking to him first. Hi, we were just playing Chinese chess and I lost again, but I think I can beat you. Do you want to play with me? Richard straight up leaves her on red. Actually, he doesn't even look at her. He leaves uh -huh. her on unopened. The man is plotting D-Day too. Why the fork would he play a game of chess for? Uh -huh. Grandfather, you asked me to bring the woman that I like. I will introduce her to you. So don't let Yura come into this house anymore. Uh -huh. You said it was a one-sided thing and that you weren't going to make it work. Did you change your mind? Yes, I'm going to pursue her. So I can't have my ex-fiance frequenting the house. It would be uncomfortable. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, and the grandpa's looking at him like, huh, this is interesting. Yura turns to Grandpa Yu, though. I was so indifferent during our engagement, Grandfather. I didn't know he was so impatient. And then she turns to Richard. People like us can't marry for love now, can we? Get permission from your grandfather before you. And Richard interrupts her. I will. He turns to Grandpa. I'll introduce her now. And the way the door opens and my jaw drops, Gia shows up wearing this super elegant light pink coat and she looks like a trillion dollars because, you know, she's worth 80 million now. And she slowly walks over with the signature walk of hers, like, bitch, I'll f***ing kill all of you, look. Which is crazy. So what are they plotting right now? What's, what is this all about? I think to trigger Yura. Mm. And to get the grandfather on her side. So actually, here's what's interesting. The grandfather doesn't like that she's too weak. Who, who's too weak? Gia. Like the answers that she gave all in the first round seem too weak. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now Gia's like coming in strong yeah. now. Yeah, uh-huh. And he she's likes She's a powerhouse. Them. Exactly. Oh. And she gives grandfather you a bow, doesn't even look at your and says, hello, I'm Gia Kang. 
。哎呀 ，OK， crazy， crazy。So Yura gets yeeted out of the house, and she's now plotting her next half-ass murder attempt. Her bodyguard is trailing behind her, waiting to just pick up all her shit, and she's screaming, "Let's get rid of Jia Kang! You're not going to back to Japan, like you." you in other words, AKA, you can't just kill everyone that bothers you. But she's like, I can't live with myself if I lose. Why do I have to feel this way over those little cockroaches? I should have handled this myself from start to finish. It's giving me a freaking headache. She dramatically storms off, looking at her bodyguard like he's the reason all of this is going wrong. But Richard sneaks up around the corner and he hears everything. Meanwhile, Gia is in the trenches. Grandpa Yu is looking like he needs an Advil right about now, and he remembers the first time he talked to Gia. And there was one part where he was asking her about how to face obstacles, and she says that she does her best, and the rest, well, it is what it is. And he didn't like that. What the f- do you mean? It is what it is, okay? <laughs> and so, yeah. Anyway, he said, "When I met you last time, there's something I didn't tell you. Powering through isn't the solution to everything. I'm aware that my grandson gave you a lot for seeing him so briefly. It's time for you to step back and say it is what it is. Being like, take the money and f- step back, lady." Uh-huh. Grandpa, you obviously found out about the money and like you know, and she says, "So you knew, you know, I gave him hell for that. Don't worry, sir. It'll never happen again." Grandpa, you looks kind of surprised. He lacks so much. You've spoiled him too much. He only knows how to work. He has no concept of money. And honestly, I was flustered because he's like one of those rich boys. What are you trying to say right now? But I like that about him. To tell you the truth, I also lack a lot. When I thought he was the perfect third generation Tebar, he seemed like this unreachable, cold person. But no, Richard is foolish. He can get angry, and he can be messy, and he can be a big little baby. He gets embarrassed, and he acts like a kid sometimes. But seeing those sides of him, I thought we could do well together. I want to be happy with him, sir. Please give Richard to me. Oh shit! What just happened? And Grandpa, you actually likes it. He'd be smiling. So I think it's like elements. She's coming on strong, but also, I think she's like describing him as very human, like he's a little spoiled brat that acts like a baby. But like Loki, I kind of love him. Grandpa, shit. Like that's the vibe. So you're telling me Grandpa's kind of a romantic dude? Yeah, or maybe he thinks like in order to run a company like that, you need a wife that like sees you versus just being like a yes girl that's like okay, fine, buy me a Chanel bag and like do whatever you want. What if? Yeah. Grandpa was like, you know how like the marriage for them is all about power marries power, right? Yeah. What if the other girl is kind of annoying, but Gia not only she's strong. But she's also smart.、Oh. She's like keeping him grounded, so this could mean more success for the business.、Mm-hmm. So she, he's maybe weighing it out in his mind, like she may take the company to the next level、mm-hmm. rather than marrying him to the other、mm-hmm. girl. So good. So good, no. Mm-hmm. Like he's playing chess. He's playing Chinese chess, baby. He's playing baby. Chinese chess,、mm-hmm. exactly. He's smart. He's strategizing. Oh, <gasps> foreshadow from the Chinese chess.、Mm. Master. Math. Damn. Shifu. Shifu. <laughs> Stop it right now. And like he seems really happy with himself. So you might be right because after the youngsters leave, he's just staring out the window, drinking a whiskey and smiling. Yeah. See, I don't think it's love though. I think he think this is better for the business. For the business,、mm. like this is the one. Yeah. So for the first time, he seems genuinely settled. Like not hiring PIs to stalk Gia. That kind of settled. But like, did you forget that they still have to go to work? Because I forgot. The next day, Gia's on top of her game at work. All the employees are gathering around, tasting LB's like little meal kit and shit. And LB, he's so distracted because he notices that Hannah's not there. It was like a whole thing. He moved on quick. <laughs> yeah, like it's crazy that he was pining over his high school first love for like the past fifteen years of his life. Meets Hannah one time, and then he's like, "Who the fuck is Gia again? <laughs> Who are you? Why are you here? Where is Hannah?" <laughs> it's like kind of crazy. Okay. Anyway, Gia walks him down to the elevator, gets back up to the sixteenth floor. The elevator doors open, and it's in Stacy. Gia just smirks and walks past her, but Stacy follows her down the hall. Why are you not picking up my calls? Why don't you pick up, huh? She grabs Gia by the arm and forces her to look in her direction, but Gia gets right in her face. Why do I have to pick up your calls? Yeah, I get it. You were with him for seven years, but he chose me over you. I'm sure it's hard to accept, but still, how could you seduce a married man? I'm about to get divorced because of you. <laughs> Gia grabs her phone and gives a call. Is this security? This is the sixteenth floor. An outsider is here. Take care of it. 
What are you doing? Do you think I'm just going to let it slide? Gia gets it right in her face. Yeah. Why would I sleep with someone else's man? I'm not you. Right. You seduced Michael this way, so I'm sure you know it's best. But if you betrayed his girlfriend of seven years, why didn't you know that he would do the same to you? Gia, I will put up posters here to make you two feel ashamed to work here. I'm not going to stand for it. <laughs> That's too bad because your husband was fired. So stop suspecting me and go be a good wife. Fold his clothes or something. Oh, oh, that's right. You can't because you two are divorcing. That's too bad. But you know what? Thinking about it pisses me off. Only you would covet trash like Michael. Why would I? And she walks off. Damn. Bruh, she sent Stacy to the grave. Stacy's shaking like an 18 year old chihuahua with one tooth left. <laughs> and she walks off, and there are a pair of security guards throwing Stacy out. She's on the pavement outside, and she's, she gets a text message from her other half, Gia. Michael, Stacy just came in and caused a fuss. It scared me, but rumors won't spread here because everyone already thinks she's crazy. Ding. Another text. Oh, oops. Sent it to the wrong person. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Who sent to who? Gia sent it to Stacy, but like acting like she's sending it to Michael. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Queen <laughs> behavior. Queen <laughs> behavior. And Stacy's about to lose it. Meanwhile, Gia and Richard are patiently waiting inside an empty office conference room, knowing that this incident is going to push Stacy over the edge. Richard tells Gia, Stacy's going to call me soon. And sure enough, he puts Stacy on speakerphone and she doesn't even say hello. She's just unhinged. I'm going to ruin Gia King. Have her, take her, marry her. I don't give a fuck. In return, she's going to hit rock bottom first. I will make her beg. And then she hangs up. It's game time, okay? Meanwhile, Michael is back at his mommy's house when he gets a letter in the mail about the insurance money. He can get $500,000 if his spouse dies. Guess where he goes? He goes to Eura's penthouse, unannounced, insurance policy in hand, and starts begging for help. Kill my wife? Yeah, he's like, basically, if I kill my wife, then no one's blackmailing you anymore. Uh huh. And I get $400,000. Like, I get half a million dollars. So, like, let's do this. Yeah, right? like murder, like, whatever. Yeah. And, like, she's looking at him because she's a billionaire. So, to her, half a million dollars is like killing someone for five bucks. <laughs> so, she's like, this is really dumb right now. This is all so stoops. I don't even know what to do right now. And, <laughs> and but, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. But she's like very intrigued by it. And she just. I don't know. She's kind of into it. So they set it up because right now, Michael's at your suite. Richard takes out his phone and sends a text to Stacy. Michael and Gia are in room 1355 at Winton Hotel. Stacy's hiding in the hotel lobby behind a column waiting for Gia to arrive. Gia struts out of the taxi, walks straight to the elevator. Stacy follows her every step. And once she gets in the elevator, she sees that it's going up to floor 13. <sighs> room 1355, huh? So she takes the next elevator, but she doesn't see that Gia did not take the elevator. She's hiding around the corner the whole time. She never got up to the, th she just pressed 13 and then hid. Okay, so she waits until the elevator door closes. Richard joins her and Stacy's about to have her whole villain arc. She walks down the hotel hallway, looking at the numbers above the rooms until she gets to 1355 at the very end and she starts banging on the door with wait, her she hands. she didn't even wait for them to start doing some shit? No. Okay. Sexy bodyguard opens it and without hesitation, Stacy shoves her way inside and she's like, move. She doesn't even know who this guy is, okay? She walks inside and first of all, girly looks mad jealous that the penthouse is so big. She's upset by this and step by step, Stacy is tracing every single movement that Gia made in the past life. She slowly walks towards the bedroom and she hears the muffled voices. But that's pretty genius, going after your wife's life insurance benefit. And Michael says, once I get paid, I'll treat you to something nice. Don't worry, I know how to return the favor. Stacy sees the door slightly cracked and she can see two figures cozying up in bed. She pushes the door open and Michael is shook, but not shook enough to get out of bed. And Yura doesn't even give a f okay? She's standing there with her jaw to the floor. Stacy is. She grabs her forehead and she's screaming, Damn, this is fucking ridiculous. Michael, you really are a piece of trash that can't be handled, huh? Yours just playing with her hair, smirking the whole time. And Michael's getting bolder. What are you going to do about it, huh? Right? She's such a loser. Oh. <laughs> Yura, I'm going to send the voice recording to the police. Where's my dad? Did you kill him? Two neuron Michael suddenly looks at Yura like, oh my God, are you a murderer? And then he's like, wait a damn minute. Did, kill him. Did, did you? I mean, 
You doesn't even look innocent. She looks like, yeah, I did. And so what? But Stacy's not done. She turns to Michael and you, Michael, I thought you were trying to get Gia back. What are you doing here with her? I heard you were fired. Since you have a lot of free time, spend it in jail. And she pulls out her phone and starts recording Michael and Yura for adultery because, you know, it's illegal. And then she's about to leave to send all of this to the police. But the bodyguard stops her. The bodyguard stops her. Not stops her. Sorry. Stops her. And is grabbing her by the wrist and screaming. And like, it's a whole thing. She's like, get lost. And all of a sudden, the scene cuts to Stacy being restrained by the wrist. And she's unconscious on the floor. And Yura, Michael, and the bodyguard are all standing over her like, uh, what do we do? Like, we don't know if she's dead. No, she's not dead. Oh, okay. But what now, right? Yeah, and Michael's stressed. Damn it, what do I do now? And Yura's trying to be calm. What do you mean? We'll go forward with your plan, but not here. I'll set it up for you. You can go kill your wife. The bodyguard, the only one with any brain cells, neuropathways that are still viable, looks at her like, um, Miss Yura? And she shuts him down with one look. So they pack up Stacy, throw her into the backseat of a gray van, and Michael drives off to kill wifey in like an Airbnb. Bro, this bodyguard has witnessed so many murders or yeah. a part of so many murders. <laughs> That's what I'm saying right now. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. So Michael gets to the Airbnb. He ties Stacy up against a pole inside the house. And he's just waiting. He's waiting until she wakes back up and her vision is fuzzy. And the first thing she sees is Michael. What do you think you're doing? Michael crouches down eye level. He always gets cocky when his victims can't fight back. So why did you do something like that, Stacy? You're great, but you never know your place. I have money. I'll give it all to you. Michael stares at her, kind of pitying her, kind of amused. If you kill me, do you think she's going to leave you alone? She's going to kill you too. Michael pulls up a chair and sits down in front of Stacy. Stacy, I'll give it to you. You really have hard evidence on Yura. Or you did. But too bad for you. We erased it when you were passed out. What? Why? You dummy. People like us shouldn't go against people like power. What can we do, right? Michael grabs Stacy's purse on the dining table, pulls out her phone, pulls up her investment account and her bank account, and you have no money. Her account is zero fucking zero. Oh Bro could God. not have even left a complimentary dollar. Like nothing. What is that? It wasn't your money anyway, okay? Stacy starts panicking because, you know, they're married. He thinks it's his now. Oh, no way. Stacy looks really upset about all of this and Michael crouches down to her eye level and pulls out a box cutter. Don't be too upset. You said you wouldn't go down alone. Well, only one of us has to die. He brings the knife to her face. So I have to take care of you because I need to start over. He gives Stacy a moment to cook on his words and then he says, just wait right here. And as soon as Michael leaves, Stacy's survival instincts go into overdrive. She's kicking, she's screaming, she's trying to get out of the ropes that are tying her down. And honestly, Michael was not trying to be quirky. Like he did need Stacy to wait because he was going to go to the boiler room and find the propane tank and make sure that it's gas leak in the house. That's how he's going to kill Stacy because he can't do it with his bare hands. Then why the hell is he taking out his knife and all that? Just like doing the most. Just like Bruh. trying to feel powerful. Yeah, I know. I know. So he goes back into the house where it's a gas leak slowly coming out. And Stacy's gone. <laughs> it's just the rope on the ground. And he's like, where the fork is she? He looks around and the knife holder is empty. Bestie is armed. And suddenly Stacy jumps out from the car and swinging. She's swinging the knife like it's an axe. Michael's like, are you crazy? Not him asking her if she's crazy <laughs> when he tried to kill her. Stacy is holding the knife with two hands, like, like a gun, honestly. It's a lot, okay? Leave the car key and move aside. Okay, just calm down, Stacy. Put the knife down, calm down. I'm not gonna die. I'm never gonna die. Weird flex. Okay. Like the crazy in her eyes is a lot. So Michael grabs the keys from his jacket pocket and reaches them out to Stacy. Here, here's the key. Just take it. Put the knife down. Just take it. Here. Stacy lets her guard down and reaches for the car keys. But while she's concentrated on the keys, Michael's been uh, using his other hand to grip onto a dining chair. And once she gets close enough, he slams it onto Stacy, literally breaking the chair against her like it's a beer bottle. This scene is so unserious because there is no way chair physics work like that. But I digress. It's K-drama land. Physics are different there. Stacy is dazed. She's on the ground. Michael grabs her by her shirt and throws her up against the table. You little shit, come here. Yeah, she like at least broke a rib or two. And Michael's like, my lovely wife's gonna die from carbon monoxide poisoning from a boiler malfunction while I'm away grabbing groceries. So stop ruining my life, just die already. These are the same words that he said to Gia in the past life. Wow. 
Yeah, and Stacy's scoffing because she's not going to go down without a fight. This is what the life insurance is about? You think it'll go your way, huh? Michael crouches down and gets in her face. I think it will. But crouching down is the second mistake he makes because Stacy kicks him in the little mic and he falls to the ground howling like a dog. Stacy's on the stairs just cackling. <laughs> My husband shouldn't lose his manhood, huh? But no, Gia told me that you're already sterile. What? What are you talking about? No, I'm not. You're shooting blanks. Should I spell it out for you? I didn't miscarry. I never got pregnant because you're shooting blanks. You're incapable of being a man. Do you get it now? Girlie all of a sudden remembers that she has to kill or be killed. So she scans the room for the knife and she lunges for it. But Michael manages to jump up and grab her and holds her down on the dining table. But then she grabs a whiskey glass, smashes it over his head. And while he's trying to regain his balance, Stacy says, fuck off and pushes him back with all her strength onto the glass coffee table in the living room. And it smashes into smithereens. And Michael is completely still and a pool of blood starts to form around his head. What? Michael took Gia's fate. Does it work? Yeah. Wow. And the cops arrive and Stacy is gone. She's AWOL. She's on the run. Oh. The next morning, Richard is in the office when he gets a call from Mr. Lee. I think Miss Yang's divorce suit is getting easier. The evidence of the affair on the SD card, I don't know why, but there's video now. The dash cam, it used to only be audio, but suddenly there's video. <laughs> suddenly? Suddenly? Richard gets it because fate is no longer in Mrs. Yang's side. Like she's no longer going to get killed by her husband. She can leave him, you know, because someone else took Gia's fate. Mm. But Mr. Lee doesn't know. He's like, why the f*** did the video come back? Like, I don't understand what's going on right now. Anyway, while Richard's on the phone, Gia gets a text message about the news that Michael's dead. And she looks at Richard and they go to talk in the office. I checked the police report. He fell over a glass table and died after hitting his head. With the evidence, the police are looking for Stacey Jung as the prime suspect. But the security cameras didn't work, so they must find out what happened. Are you going to go to the funeral? She is. Because how can you not attend your murderer's funeral, right? So she's in all black. And she's just staring at his empty funeral little section with his little funeral portrait. And she asks herself, I thought about how nice it would be if you were dead. I would explode with anger back then back then when disappointment and despair and betrayal were the only things in my life i spent all night wondering why you were like that to me but then it ended like this and gia thinks of all the moments that michael tried to ruin her on her way out michael's mom walks in she looks at gia she looks desperate she looks genuinely upset how dare you come back if you didn't betray michael he would have never married stacy she killed my son that that she ruined my precious son's life my poor boy and she falls onto the ground crying it's like a whole thing anyway gia goes back to work because she's still gotta work michael's death is all over the news so gossip starts to spread at unk and gia's in the back corner of the elevator when she hears some co-workers whispering isn't that stacy from marketing don't you remember no they look just alike look at that picture they're looking for her she's awol accused of killing michael she married michael remember she looks uncomfortable gia because stacy's on the loose Mm. that night Gia and Richard are in bed together listening to the news and it's been a it's been a day since the police put out the bulletin on a bolo on Stacy the prime suspect but her whereabouts are unknown and Richard is trying to switch off the channel to something else but Gia's like no I can handle it but Richard he's not liking this he's anxious he tells her I feel uneasy you're too nice Gia so you wouldn't know but some people don't know when to stop unless you stomp on them completely they will never stop and of course, freaking stressing me out while Richard and G are cuddling, we see someone facing the building, looking at their windows, waiting in a black tracksuit and black baseball hat. It's Stacy. And she says, you can't be the only one who's happy. Gia, never. And now this is the moment that we've been waiting for, the finale, okay? I stopped everything for this episode. If I had diarrhea, I would hold in my poop to watch this. If I was in labor, I would tell the baby, you can wait another hour. If I was injured and had severe blood loss, I would ask the EMTs to play me this episode in the ambulance. But I digress, okay? There is no pre-gaming with this episode. No foreplay, no appetizers. We're getting straight to the meat. If Stacy is suspect number one, Yura is sure suspect number two, since Michael practically adopted her as his mummy and called her on the daily. So Yura is sitting in the police interrogation room and she honestly looks pretty unfazed. She looks around. This place sucks every time I come here. 
So I guess it's not her first rodeo. The interrogator walks in, drops a little notebook on the desk in front of Yura. I'm Prosecutor Choi from Criminal Division 3. Yura just nods and gives him a pretty smile. You're born with a diamond spoon. You're pretty and probably well-mannered, so you're treated nicely. Yura's nodding along, but she's honestly pretty bored. Everyone treats you nicely, so nothing's hard for you. But things are different now. Everyone thinks that this is a formality, but... And it is, sir. This investigation is just a formality. <laughs> Look here, Miss Oyura. And the prosecutor slams his fist on the table. But whoever, whoever was cast to be this prosecutor did not eat at all. He came to set, full, constipated. He did not take a single bite. Nothing was eaten. It was just like, no. That was what he did. Yeah. I mean, no wonder Yura does not take him seriously. She's like, look here, prosecutor. It's not time for someone like you to act all big and tough. Do I look like someone who'd be scared after seeing you rush in here? I'm not a fucking idiot. She leans in like he's the one on trial. You're not sure about anything. Would it be easier for me to say what you want to hear out of fear? Or should I just walk out on my own two feet? Do you want to bet? I'm going to walk out here on my own two feet. And right at that moment, there's another knock on the door. The bodyguard rushes in and it's Yura's attorney. Yura doesn't even look at them. But she walks out the police station on her own two feet like a little free woman. Five other men walk out with her, police officers, and they bow as she leaves. Goodbye, ma'am. Good night. Have a good one. Sorry about that. Wait, they just handled it? Yeah, because, you know, she's she's rich. Mm. I don't know if that's some, like, Korean shit or some Chebo shit, but, like, it's a lot, okay? Anyway, Yura's looking at her bodyguard again. The world must be going crazy. Everyone keeps crossing the line. This is for the best. They can't do anything with that file they have on me. The police, that is. Yura's bodyguard is about to open the door for her so that she can leave, but he sees a man standing across the parking lot staring them down. The air is thick. Much alpha pheromones here. Because it's Mr. Lee. Oh yeah, what? face card, mewing, jawline, Mr. Lee staring them down. And Yura looks at him. And it's clear. Mr. Lee did not come here to just intimidate Yura. No, he drove CEO boss granddaddy here. And that means Yura's got bigger things to worry about. Okay? What does that mean? Yeah. She gets into the back seat where the grandfather is. <laughs> grandfather, you didn't have to come here. It was just all a big misunderstanding. I guess I'm not such a great judge of character with that boy. Yura, you crossed the line this time. Turn in your resignation. Don't think about exercising your rights over the airline or the tour company shares. Yura's eyes get wide. She looks disgusted, disturbed, okay? Soon, UNK Foundation will send a volunteer group to Africa. Join them. Go and volunteer, and then volunteer some more, and then volunteer again until you come back a human. Once you've built character, then you can return. Wait, 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 wait. What, wait why? Because she's under investigation for, like, committing murder. Oh, committing murder. Michael's dead, you ah. know? Like, she can't be the vice president of Cloud Air and then be in an active ongoing investigation on somebody's death. But innocent until proven guilty, right? Yeah, but not in Korea. Like, you gotta at least step down. If it's like a murder investigation. Oh. Come on, you gotta at least step down, no? Okay, okay. Yeah, and then the grandpa is like, and once you've built character, you've become a person, then you can return. I gave you the position and it ruined you. Still, it is a big privilege to have another chance. Keep that in mind. I thought they were just partners. I think UNK owns. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. You can't play it cool anymore. Like the devoted granddaughter figure mask slips off. No, why should I resign? Why should I volunteer? Africa? <laughs> right. So it's because you like her, huh? That's, that's what it is, don't you? Richard is family after all, so you want to let him do whatever he wants and you like that girl? <sighs> Grandpa just grunts, okay? He's over it. Do it then. Yura's got the look of a bestie who has lost all her first class airline privileges and granddaddy looks like he's about to have a stroke. Do that, but don't touch me. What did I do wrong, grandfather? You're pretending to be fair, but you're not. Yura gets out and slams the car door. She looks like she's had enough of this you family bullshit for like two lifetimes. But while she's walking back to her car, Richard intercepts her. I told grandfather it'd be no use, but he doesn't know you that well. What the hell are you saying? <laughs> Forget it. I'm exhausted, so let's talk tomorrow. You shouldn't have messed with Gia. What? What did wait, I do? Wait, 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 wait. Richard was gonna die. They need another person to die? Ah. What? What did I do, huh? No, even if I did do something, do you have proof? Yeah, I do. Richard steps aside and Yura sees two very familiar faces stepping out of Richard's car. What's wrong, Yura? Do you see a ghost? 
Yura is staring straight at Stacy's dad and Gia's mom, who are most definitely not dead. But Yura distinctly remembers trying to stage their self exit and hotboxing them in a van. Okay. Turns out Yura's bodyguard called Richard and they went to go save them. And it was like a whole thing. And then they've been in hiding. And now they're like going to go to the police and tell them everything about how Yura paid them to go kill Gia. But then they didn't end up killing Gia and they ran into Richard. But then Yura like did all this and then Yura tried to kill them. It's a whole thing. Richard turns to Yura. Pay for what you did, Yura. Your problem is thinking you can do anything you want. Stop trying to get away with it. So pay properly this time. This is all happening in front of the police station. The cops rush out. They arrest Stacy's dad and Gia's mom. You're under arrest for attempted murder. And Stacy's dad is just staring at Yura. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you guys everything. Got some big fish. Oh, oh yeah. And the prosecutor turns to Yura. Now that we have Stacy's dad here, I think we'd like to talk to you again, Miss O. I wouldn't say that I love cleaning. Like, it's very tedious. It takes a lot of time. I've got a dust allergy. It's like a whole thing. But I do love the feeling after a deep clean. It is like a brand new person feeling. Like, when I weed through my closet and I weed out all the clothes that I literally never wear, you end up with so much more space, better organization, and just like the sense of accomplishment. And you know what? I think it's about time that we start doing some spring cleaning around here. But for our subscriptions, think about it. It is the same way that you buy clothes that you never end up wearing. You are constantly buying into subscriptions that you never use and then they just keep piling up in the back of your closet wasting space adding nothing to your life but unlike clothing it's a reoccurring charge and i get it nobody likes cleaning That's why Rocket Money does it for me. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Did you know that nearly 75% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about? That number sounds crazy, but I genuinely probably couldn't name all the subscriptions that I have. I'm constantly subscribing to new streaming platforms to watch movies, K-dramas, but I also subscribe to completely random websites for a free trial just to like read an article about something and then I forget to cancel. And if a miracle does happen and I do remember to cancel, I mean, it's a lot. Like they make you jump through so many hoops to cancel. I don't want to talk to your manager, Kelsey. I just want to cancel my subscription. That is it. But don't worry. If you have Rocket Money, you'll never have to talk to Kelsey from customer service about it ever again. Rocket Money lets you see all of the subscriptions in one place. And if I see something that I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. Their dashboard also makes it easy to track my spending. And it shows me this month's spending compared to last month's. They even help me create a custom budget to keep my spending in check. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lowering your bills for you. Like by up to like 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money will take it from there. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash baking. That's rocketmoney.com slash baking. Rocketmoney.com slash baking. So while Yura's fighting for her life, Miss Yang literally is too. She wakes up from her cancer surgery and she sees that she's surrounded by all of her friends and family, her parents, her daughter, Richard, Gia, and of course, Mr. Lee. And she's way too weak to talk. So she just looks at all of them. Everyone has tears in their eyes and she gives them a thumbs up. And then afterwards, the parents and the kid leave. So it's just Mr. Lee, Richard, and Gia, and they're filling her in and all the tea. Michael's dead. It's Stacy that killed, like this whole thing. And she's like, goodness, Stacy did something like that? So you're telling me Michael's funeral was held downstairs in the hospital, but I had no idea. That feels strange. If I had known, I would have, Mr. Lee is not having it. Even if you knew, you still shouldn't have. You can't go to a funeral before a major surgery. Mr. Lee sounds really passionate. And everyone's like, what the? What's wrong with this guy? You're nagging again. You know the surgery went well. That's why the surgery went well. You were so scared of the surgery that you were constantly crying and crying. Shall I keep going? Gia and Richard are just staring at each other like, okay, um, are we looking into a mirror? Like, what's going on right now? <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, but Richard changes the subject. Anyway, Mrs. Yang, since the SD card's data is fully recovered, things have gotten easier. The court will take recent threats into account seriously that your husband has made, and it'll all work out well. You might even be able to get parental rights in full custody. Mr. Lee is angry. No, we'll get even more. We'll make him lose all visitation rights as well. Then my daughter will lose her father for good. (laughs) Mr. Lee. 
But I will be their <laughs> father. Mr. Lee realizes maybe he overstepped his boundary, and he tries to soften it. Well, we don't have to do that if you don't want to. The choice is yours. And everybody looks at her, and she says, "No, I'm happy about it." She grabs Gia's hand, and she says, "When I got the surgery, it felt like I was dying. I couldn't see the end, so it was hard, and I was even betrayed by my husband at that time. But I got a new chance now, you know, and." <laughs> My husband, that bastard, he'll probably try to manipulate our daughter. He's never going to be helpful to her. I can't let her suffer like that. He is nothing but a sperm donor, and I'm going to stay strong. Mm. And Gia is crying, and she's like, I'll try harder, too. And then there's one more romance that is so cute. So LB goes into the office, and he sees Hannah sitting at her desk, and she hasn't been to work for a pa- like the past couple of days. So when LB finally sees her, he's so nervous, and he's so excited, okay? And he's like, where's Gia? I, I came to talk about the meal kit and some of the changes that she wanted to make. Oh, Miss Kang's meeting with the development team, and it's running late. Sorry to disappoint you, but I guess I can explain everything. Follow me this way. LB doesn't look disappointed. He looks very excited. So as they're going over all of the dishes, he keeps glancing at her. The spinach pasta with the sea snails, the perilla cream pasta, and all of that. So please check the recipes again, and just make sure that these are the ones that we're going to go with. Um, Hannah, by the way, did I do something wrong to you? What? I mean, you weren't here last time when I came, and you're being kind of, um unfriendly today but i'm happy to see you and i'm pretty clueless so i wouldn't know if you don't tell me if i did something wrong so i guess if i did something wrong i'm sorry but if i didn't i guess i'm also sorry you noticed that i was away of course i looked for you why would you look for me (laughs) uh, right well i what um I, last time I brought the cake, you really liked the cake and I bought a new oven and it's insanely good. And uh, whatever dish I was making, it's now three times better. So I thought, I, I guess that's why I, Hannah's smiling, pretending to listen and she reaches out and she pokes his ear. By the way, your ears are really big and pretty. LB flinches and grabs his ears. He's acting like she just grabbed his wee wee, okay? <laughs> what are you doing? You can't touch someone's ear like that. Why not? I, I don't know, but, but you can't do it. Then can I touch your hands then? Of course you can touch my hands, but my ears are sensitive. I'll be still touching his ears as he's traumatized and violated. But Hannah reaches out, grabs his hand instead, and he instantly stops talking. Yeah, and they just hold hands, and they stare at each other. And she looks at him and says, I think I like you. What? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and that is their love story, okay? It's like a whole thing. It's We're going to keep going, okay? But she's got to leave LB because she's got a very important lunch, which is at Grandpa Yu's house with Gia, Richard, and Hannah. It's like a family lunch. (laughs) And it's actually really cute. Grandpa Yu is like, when it comes to life, you can't have both. What I mean is, as long as Richard inherits you and Kay, it's not going to be easy to have a good personal happiness and social responsibilities at the same time. Gia's nodding and she can't help but chuckle. What? What is so funny? It's just that the way you speak is very similar to the way Richard speaks. Richard stares blankly at Grandpa You like, what the f***? Am I looking at my future? Is that going to be me when I grow up? Hannah's giggling. You do kind of talk like Grandfather. And they're, they're both trying to ignore it because it's like a cute little moment. And they both reach for a side dish and it's the same one. And Hannah starts blowing up. See, look at that. You guys have the same taste. Look at your pick of side dishes. I'm disappointed in you, Grandfather. I thought you had better taste. It's like a really cute moment. Anyway, Gia says, I'll try very hard. I know I was given a precious opportunity, grandfather, and I'll make sure to be less greedy and more generous in life. And do you think that it's that easy? No. And if it doesn't work, because remember last time, what did she say? I guess it is what it is. Mm. She says, and if it doesn't work, I'll try harder. Yes. And Grandpa, you <laughs> approves, and everybody chuckles, and they start eating their meal, and it's a whole thing, okay? Meanwhile, while they're having a nice family lunch, Stacy wearing all black baseball cap buying paint thinner. Gallons of paint thinner. What the fork do you need paint thinner for? What even is paint thinner? She's buying it all cash, but maybe there's an excuse for this. Paint thinner? Maybe she's painting, right? No. But, I mean, you can never have enough paint thinner. That's what my mom says. I keep them all loaded in my house. You're paying in cash? Cash is king. You can't trust banks these days, right? No, but really, Stacy is out here being so sus. Like, genuinely so sus. Like, she thinks she's in some sort of assassin movie. <laughs> yeah. She's not trying to Van go with the paint thinner. She's trying to kill Gia and then go. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so, for Gia, she's back to back celebrating. She invites all the besties and her boo over to her apartment for some dinner. It's Mrs. Yang, Mr. Lee, Hannah, Elby, and Richard, and Gia sitting on the floor eating jajangmyeon and drinking beer. And Gia's like, now let's toast to Chef Elby's success and to a successful divorce. And Hannah says, and to successful love. Cheers. Wow, beer tastes the best this way. Don't be surprised, Miss Gia. This happens to be Richard's very first time eating food like this. Street food. Gia's like, I gotta stick up for my man. What are you talking about, Hannah? He eats pork kukbak with tons of jungguji. Like jungguji, I think is what you call it. Like little side dishes. Okay, like the chives that you put in there. Hannah's so confused. She's like, jungguji. What, what is jungguji? And Richard shakes his head like she's such a spoiled chebar that never had real Korean food like the rest of the population eats that he also had for the first time five minutes ago. <laughs> he turns to Gia. She doesn't even know what it is. There's no use talking to her. You're right. Hannah slaps her brother playfully and LB looks at her like, it's okay, I'll teach you. You can have my jungguji. <laughs> yeah and mrs yang is having a moment and she's like i really feel like i came back from the dead i'm so surprised by you too how are you two siblings hannah and richard lb agrees they do not look alike at all mrs yang turns to mr lee and it's strange that you're here too mr lee <laughs> mr lee is kind of funny because everybody else is dressed very casually but he's still wearing a tie and a suit and he cannot relax because he must always be vigilant what if he has to hit someone with a sees and desist at any moment he must be prepared let me be clear mrs yang i'm not here for you i work for the unk family yes yes that's what i meant mr lee okay you work for the incredible person of the unk family and that's why you're here still very surprising <laughs> hannah raises her hand she's always ready for this okay i'm part of the owner's family too and by the way mr lee would not come to an occasion like this even if the owner specifically told him to Honestly, Mr. Lee would do anything to shut Hannah up at this point. So he aggressively uses a spoon to pop open a beer bottle. The cat flies off and it makes everybody stop and stare. And there's beer fizzing everywhere. And he says, it is my job to make sure the owner's family watch what they say. Mrs. Yang chuckles and Mr. Lee starts laughing. Like this is my first time seeing him smile and laughing. So after the whole celebrations are over, everyone starts making their way out. Gia and Richard walk them to the elevators. Bye, get home safely. Hannah stares out the window. Oh, it's storming pretty bad. What do we do? Gia walks to grab umbrellas, but she only has two. We only have two. Mr. Lee responds. I drove here, so I'm good. He looks at Mrs. Yang. It's on the way. And as soon as he says it, his eyes literally shoot up to the ceiling and he won't make eye contact. And Mrs. Yang smirks. Because like, come on now, okay? What's on your way? If you mean my home, you could always give me a ride. <laughs> and he's like, that sounds good. Everyone is like, oh, so cute. <laughs> and Hannah breaks the silence and she says, I can just run and catch the bus. Don't worry. LB looks at the ceiling. Why don't I give you a ride if that's okay with you? Bro, this is, this is yeah. too much. They think you're going to wrap it up in the perfect, like, yeah. like okay, you connect with yes, her. Or she can, they okay. all get a date. <laughs> and then Hannah is looking and she's like, but it's in the opposite. Dir oh. And everyone's staring at them. Yeah, okay. And... Wait, what, 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 what? Because now it's so obvious that they like each other. So she was trying to not do that. But she's like, but it's in the opposite direction, you know? Uh -huh. And then she's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, give me a ride. It's like so cute. Meanwhile, Richard is confused what the fork's going on. So the four of them, they get into the elevator and Gia's waving bye and she's thanking them for coming. And Hannah smiles at her. Have a good night's rest, Miss King. And you, Richard, go to sleep or whatever. And then the door closes because, you know, sibling energy. And after the elevator closes, Richard has a moment of low brain activity. He's so confused. Why are Albie and Hannah going together? And earlier, Hannah said a toast for successful love. What is, what is that about? Oh, my goodness, you are so clueless. I'm going to go in, okay? And Gia starts heading back home. And I guess Richard isn't getting any cuddles tonight because sh she leaves him next to the elevator. He's standing there like, Albie likes Hannah? Why would he like Hannah? I don't understand. Gia goes back to her apartment to clean up, but the rain and thunder start to completely take over and then the lights go off and it's a fucking horror movie and we all know what's about to happen, okay? And the doorbell rings, she walks over, nobody's there. So what does she do? She opens the door. <laughs> Why would you open the door? <laughs> she gets tased. Stacy oh. comes in, tases her ass. She falls on the ground. She wakes up with a zip tie around her, okay? 
Stacy. She's got her full black leather fit on and some lipstick because she's out here to murder. She's out here to slay. <laughs> but she has to slay in order to slay. Stacy is very busy, just like painting, like pouring paint thinner all over the place, all over the curtains. And Gia finally wakes up and she's staring at her. What are you doing? Oh, are you up? It would have been better if you stayed unconscious. Fire spreads more because of the curtains. Sturdy buildings are insulated, so, you know, I had to get more paint thinner. You need to um, study to do anything. You know that, right? Stacy crouches down in front of Gia and sets a lighter on the coffee table. Gia, I'm sorry. We can't do anything about it now. You always only think about yourself. Gia's freaked out because these are the exact words Stacy had told her in the previous life before she died. But instead of feeling scared, Gia chuckles. You really do live up to my expectations. What? I was worried that you'd be a lot smarter, but I overestimated you. This is the best you can do. Seeing you hit rock bottom like this, it suits you more than anything. Stacy's face is twitching, okay? She stands back up and she steps away from Gia. She looks scared, okay? Stop acting tough. You're the worst one here, Gia. You dumped Michael on me knowing that he was trash and look at you now. You threw me in the garbage and took everything good for yourself. Is that why you killed Michael? Why shouldn't I? He tried to kill me first. It doesn't matter. There's no proof. I'll turn myself in. I'll say it was an accident and I ran out of fear. If I pretend to regret it, as always, people are going to feel bad for me. Right. You're always so good at playing the victim. I want Gia Kang. Gia slumps her head down as if she's about to give up. But when she looks back up, she's got a huge smile on her face. No. I won. And she stands up and slams her wrist over her thigh to break the zip ties. Stacy immediately rushes over to the lighter, but instead of going for the lighter too, Gia grabs Stacy by the arm, chest, flings her over onto the ground, forces Stacy to just, it's like a whole thing, okay? She, Is it from the lesson that she took? Yeah, she <laughs> that one lesson. And she'd be knocking out all of her, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And she swipes it out of reach and Gia's hovering over her and says, I learned so many things because of you. You knew I was coming? You dragged me around and took everything from me, Stacy. I felt sorry for myself, so I decided to face you this time and start running. Don't hide behind me or anyone else anymore. You face the consequences of your own actions. Face the consequences? I'll get manslaughter. Just you wait. It's not manslaughter anymore. You just made the evidence with your own mouth. And Gia looks up at the corner and there's a CCTV camera. Oh. Okay. Anyway, we find out that Gia and Richard knew that Stacy was coming. They knew that she bought the paint thinner. She knew all of that. And at first, Richard just wanted to save Gia and make sure that Stacy can't get to her. But Gia was like, no, let her because I don't want to run for the rest of my life. This is my second life. I'm not going to live like that. So they set it up. They set up the CCTV camera that Richard and the police are watching in real time. Oh. Yeah. She had to learn how to get rid of zip ties. It was a whole thing. And this is what's happening. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So she, uh, she planned it. So she tells Stacy, this is the price you pay for your sins. This is the hell I made for you. Richard bursts in with a ton of cops and they start dragging Stacy away. And she's screaming. She's like freaking out. It's not me. Gia King set this up. It wasn't me. It was her. It was Gia King. It was Gia. <laughs> The cops drag her away while Richard stays back to hold on to Gia as she cries because this is their new fate. And Richard says, in bed, it's all over now. Only good things will happen from now on, and I'm going to make sure of it. I will protect you forever, so don't think about it anymore. You took back what was rightfully yours, and I got an opportunity that wasn't mine. That's why I have you in my arms. Yeah, it's really cute, but it's also kind of sad, right? Because they're like making out. He flips over and he gets on top of her to make out with her. But you can also see it zoom in on Richard's chest tattoo, which is a reminder of the heart that he's going to die. Like they haven't escaped his fate yet. Okay, are we going to take care of that? Now, Yura's getting out of the police station and she's pissed, but this time she's kind of on the run, okay? The bodyguard is by her side. Prosecutor Troy applied for your travel ban. You must leave the country today. What time's the flight? First flight is in three hours. The second one is in four hours. I've booked both. Let's hurry. She looks over at her bodyguard. You can't do anything right. You're fired. Give me the plane tickets. She snatches the tickets from his hand and she just leaves him there at the parking lot. He rushes over to her car because I don't know what, why. And she's just stepping on the gas, speeding off. And she's so pissed. She's speeding through traffic, trying to get to Inchon because she needs to flee. She's stepping on it, honking at the cars, like just licking tailgates. She, her phone starts buzzing. It's her dad calling, but she's like, not right now. I'm a fugitive. And at the same time, Richard's taking a shower, but he keeps getting flashbacks to the car accident in 2023 and he can't stop reliving it. He gets out of the shower, wipes his hand over the now foggy mirror, and he notices something. He grabs the bathrobe, finds Gia in the kitchen. Gia, she gets up. What's wrong? What is it? It's gone. 
and he shows his chest and the heart tattoo is gone. Ah. And he's scared because what does this mean? What does it mean? And in the background, they turn to the TV. An announcement is made. Former Vice President Yura Oh of Cloud Air was in a car accident near Incheon Airport. She's being transferred to the hospital, but ended up dead. Ah. Uh. Bruh. No, no. Here's the plot twist. Yeah. What if that girl and Michael came back alive? Ah! <laughs> oh my god, no. Mm-hmm. That would stress me out. Mm-hmm. Now there's four of them who knows the history. Bro, the that would be future. fun. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. That would be next level. Mm-hmm. Now, anyway, everything pans out from here. Mrs. Yang is free. She finalizes the divorce. And Mr. Lee was her attorney. And she thanks him. And it's like really cute. And he's like, it's hot outside. I'll give you a ride. No, that's okay. I'm spending my first day as a single woman with my friends. I should go. But before she walks off, she turns to him. I'll buy you a meal, Mr. Lee. Nothing too expensive. A moderately expensive meal. Can I do that? And he chuckles because you're like, you just know they're going to get together. You just know. (sighs) Ah! Meanwhile, it's Christmas. So we're like getting these flash forwards. It's Christmas time. And in Richard's apartment, there's Christmas decor everywhere. Christmas stockings head up. And Richard is wearing a Santa hat, stuffing a turkey pretty aggressively. Like, I don't know. That's not how we do it in the States. So like, how is this allowed to air? Even Gia mentions, um, uh, the turkey looks like it's suffering. Isn't that too much stuffing? And she's, shh, shh, it's not. Just wait. I have my own method for this. My father taught it to me. And when I have kids later, I will teach them too. Oh yeah, by the way, have you thought of some cute baby names? <laughs> the way she's not expecting that, she goes silent. And Richard looks up at her and realizes, okay, that was a little weird. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, I, what I was trying to I'm not saying that we should have kids right away. I just thought maybe it'd be nice to take our time thinking of good names together. Yeah, but we don't know what's going to happen. And thinking about baby names beforehand is a little, um, it just feels so significant. Richard's a drama queen. He looks pissed. So he he theatrically rips off his plastic cups. You don't know what's going to happen. He walks up to her and grabs her waist and he's still wearing the Santa hat. It's so unserious. Look at us right now. He kisses her forehead. We do this. And then he kisses her neck and we do this. And he picks her up and he's taking her to the bedroom. Ah, disgusting. Ah! And throughout the days, weeks, months, Gia is genuinely happy. Like everything is falling into place. And she tells her dad, like in a monologue, Appa, I'm so happy now. It's not that I've become someone great. I'm still Gia Kang. Anyway, after work, one day Gia gets home to Richard and he made Gia her favorite meal, pork kupa with the little chives. And he puts the bowls down. Here. Why, why, why is the show still going? Just wait. Yeah. Shit's about to go down. <laughs> and she's like, thank you for the meal. And Richard is like, wait. And he brings over the little chives and she puts it in and she tastes the soup and she looks like her entire world has stopped. Like she almost looked like she's either going to slap him silly or start screaming. Well... I know this taste. Is this from the restaurant that we went to in Busan that's like seven hours away that was about to close down? Nothing gets past your taste buds. Yes, you're right. Wait, wait, after the restaurant was gone, I looked for restaurants that made it like them and I couldn't find anything similar. And oh my God. And she scarfs down another bite. I, and I was like, it's Pusan, right? They can't, why can't there be more restaurants like this? Why are they all so different? And then she shoves another spoonful in her mouth. Richard hasn't even touched his food yet. You don't have to gobble it down. Okay, Chia, you can eat it whenever you want. They opened a branch in Seoul just five minutes from here. No way. He brought them here. He made them open a restaurant (laughs) next to their house. Okay, daddy. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay, like buying a whole restaurant to make your girlfriend happy. That's the new bare minimum. That, hello? Hello? (laughs) What do you want? (laughs) Heidi Lau. (laughs) Heidi Lau? The whole company. (laughs) Heidi Lau, please. Okay? And Richard's like, that's okay, right? Aren't you so impressed by your boyfriend right now? And Gia says, actually, I was thinking, do you have plans this weekend? There's somewhere I want to go with you. 
So that weekend, they go over to this little park by the lake, and it's winter time, so it's cold and snow is falling, and it almost doesn't even look familiar because it's winter. But that is where Richard and Gia spent their first night together, right next to the lake, where they laid on the grass all night. And they're standing there, arm in arm. And Gia tells Richard, "When I was young, I always felt anxious and lonely, but I'm not anxious or lonely anymore since I have you." It's no surprise. I am the best allowance your dad ever picked to give you. And Gia laughs. This is where we started. And I want to start our new start here too. And she turns to him and says, "Richard, will you marry me?" And Richard looks at her like she just slapped him across the face. Okay, our king is so dramatic. He looks at her and says, "I can't believe this." And he walks off, leaving her stranded, alone. And she's offended. I mean, no. What I meant was that's just how I feel right now. You don't have to give me an answer. How could you just leave me like? Oh, it's just, I thought that you had changed, but you're still the cocky CEO. And she's standing there, confused. But he comes back <laughs> with a huge bouquet of flowers, and he says, "You can do whatever you want, but not a proposal." And he gets down on one knee and pulls out the most beautiful ring, <laughs> and he says, "I've been carrying it for so long. I wanted to propose all this time. Will you marry me?" Dang. Cut to Stacy. Cut to Stacy in prison. Okay, and she's in prison talking to all the prison ajumas. I know Gia gaslit everybody and put me in here. She's so jealous of my life. She stole my husband. Yeah, she married my husband that I was dating for like seven years. It was a whole thing, and that's why I'm in prison. But I just think that she's a little delusional. Yeah, spinning a whole new story again. Okay, but that night she gets a dream that her husband Michael visits her in prison, and it's like a whole thing. And he's like, "Hey." I got insurance money from killing you. So can you go give Gia all the insurance money? And she's screaming, "Why does everyone care about Gia?" And they take her away to the insane asylum. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the prison TV is playing the news. The wedding of the century. Gia and Richard's wedding at the、uh, Winton Hotel, and、wow. we see all the photos, and it's beautiful. Like Gia is just walking down the, and everybody's there. It, <sighs> the, I love it. This show just like keeps going. It's like I'm just gonna tell you exactly how happy they are, yeah, and how happy they are, and how miserable she, the other girl,、yes. is. I'm just gonna keep going. It is like the most beautiful grand wedding, like everything that was the opposite of her first wedding, and it's just beautiful. Even Grandpa Yu has the biggest smile on their face, and it's just the sweetest thing. And Gia tells her dad, "Everything got a little bit better. I wish you were here. You would be so happy to see me this happy." Are you watching? And Gia's still at the ceremony, taking all these pictures. And she throws the bouquet, and this time Hannah catches it and shows it to Elby, and he smiles. <laughs> anyway, the next scene is Gia's speech. Hello, I'm Gia King, the director of UNK's new Second Chance Foundation. <laughs> Our foundation's planning to gradually contribute 15 million dollars from major affiliated companies by next year. From there, UNK plans to initiate systematic and continuous donations to society as the company that understands the meaning of sharing. Even in moments when everything seems to be over, I believe there is another path. The path could be even better. There must be a second chance. No, people should always get a second chance. To those who are suffering because of one wrong choice they made, I hope our foundation can be of help. Thank you. Second chance foundation, and then the next year, Gia and Richard are suffering. They have twin boys. They look like they're about to fall asleep at any moment. It keeps going. It keeps Bro, are you serious? <laughs> it keeps going. I feel like, like it was a perfect ending five minutes ago. Why does it keep going? No, but it was really good. Okay. No,、uh, but it was like really scratching the itch. Okay. They're crying so loud, and they both look so sleep deprived, and they're sitting on the couch. And Richard is like, "This one smells weird. I think we got to take him to the hospital." Gia they don't have like、him. someone who's helping them. No, Gia smells、What? the twin, looks at him, and goes, "He just pooped." And Richard goes, "Ah,、oh, poop. Okay. Number two, you poop a lot. Why don't you ever sleep? You always just be pooping." I'm gonna go change your diaper, and Gia smiles over, and she looks sleep deprived, and she says, "I've never done this before, so it's not easy, but I think I'm doing a good job. I'm definitely moving forward little by little now. I'm not walking in place anymore. I'm walking forward." And every year they add more photos to her father's burial site of all the family and the kids, and the kids are now like ten. <sighs> 
or okay. like five okay. and uh, they have one more baby and Hannah and grand grandfather you are babysitting the twins at the newborn and the twins are showing them a little drawing of a giant cherry blossom tree in front of a lake and then they're explaining the family photo and they've scribbled on top this is our family motto we are each other's sturdy land we are land and the grandfather looks at Hannah and goes do you know what they're saying I have no idea like are they saying lamb Bang? that's bread Bang? land why does that sound so familiar <laughs> Hannah and grandpa you look so happy to be babysitting it's like a cute little scene and they're like enjoying the family and the vibes and then the kids are like grandpa where's mommy and daddy and Hannah's like I don't know I think it's some sort of anniversary it's April 12th 2023 the day that Gia died so Richard takes her to an art gallery of an artist that works with the Second Chance Foundation uh-huh. and the whole place is covered in beautifully drawn cherry blossoms. Because remember the day she died, there were cherry blossoms coming in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she's staring at him and she's staring at the paintings and Richard grabs her hand and looks her in the eye and says... Thank you for making April 12th a completely different day. And Gia holds back tears and she replies, Thank you for making me look forward to tomorrow. I'm so happy. (laughs) (laughs) The end. Oh my God. (laughs) It was so cute. It's a napkin. Okay. <laughs> it was so cute. It was such a satisfying ending. Like I hate when the K dramas. It's like this sad ending where like Richard still dies, but like she is an independent woman. Like I no. Thought, I thought she's gonna wake up in the hospital. It was all a dream. It was, it was all a dream. <laughs> yeah, bro. Bro, that would traumatize me. I would have so much trauma. Oh my god. That's it. <laughs> fin finale the end six episodes later <sighs> that's a month and a half i would never get back <laughs> <laughs> oh just kidding it's oh good. man it's good. It's good. i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm gonna go cry again i cried while watching it i cried while now <laughs> it's too much this show is too much and i'll see you guys tomorrow ah!